how to get him the ball consistently. So I don't know if Fields is the guy to do that because he loves, you know, he's a great runner. Yep. And he just seems to just let it rip. That's the thing with Fields. He just will not let it rip. Maybe he didn't trust his receivers. 855-212-4CBS. <laughs> 855-212-4227. All right, we're talking about uh, the future of the Pittsburgh Steelers and reportedly bringing in Russell Wilson for an interview or a, a meeting. Does Russell Wilson get out of the building? So, quote unquote. Yeah. Well, that the, if he does not if he does not get that job, then and now we're really dwindling. then we go quickly to the conspiracy theory that oh they were doing him a favor because you mentioned these corporate ties or yeah. or something or I'm sure Tomlin and Russ could be friends. They've both been in the league together for a long time. Who knows? Uh, the second in odds is the Raiders and Jerry Dulac, who reported this story, said there was another team. I would think it's the Steelers or the Raiders are by far one and two. There's not a great third fit. Well, if I were the Raiders, though, wouldn't I be putting it out there or no? I don't know. I uh, Yeah, I'm not sure. What else you got going on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but the Raiders, do you yeah, want that? Kinda. If you're a Raiders fan, do you want that headline? Hey, we interviewed Russell Wilson, but we're not signing him. Maybe they're worried about the negativity of not signing him. Well, I mean, Antonio Pierce, the interim head coach, did come out and say we're done with Band-Aids, which kind of made you feel like, well, all right, they're going to get somebody in the draft. Right, right. But he, if he said that at a podium, you can, you know, you have a good reason to assume the exact opposite is going to happen <laughs> because yeah. anything yeah. that an NFL team says means nothing this time of year. 855-212-4CBS. Do you believe Steelers, Russell Wilson, is this real or is this smokescreen and sort of, I don't know, doing a solid for Russ maybe? I can't believe we're saying this about a guy like Russell Wilson who... Still a still definitely a starting caliber quarterback in the league, but close. Like he's close, but yeah. it's crazy to think, oh, they have to do him a solid. Like I think we should do that poll. Is the Steelers talking to Russell Wilson uh more what's the word? A favor? Are we gonna say that? Or is it genuine interest? Yeah, is it, I think it's is a it genuine interest, yes or no? Yeah. At Maggie and Pearl. The other uh, there is a chance that this is just you know, the Russ's agent, maybe they owe him a favor. You never know. This time of year, we have free agency starting next Monday. Man, you can't trust a word anybody says right now. Everyone has an agenda, right? Definitely. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. Okay, you're welcome to weigh in. We see you guys on the phone. Steeler country, stand up. We want to hear from you because this is you know interesting development. You got a team with a great defense. You have no clue what they're doing at quarterback. You cannot be feeling awesome about that right now. 855-212-4CBS. Don't move. More Maggie and Pearl off straight ahead. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining.
2 minutes 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Back on Maggie and Perloff, there is a lot going on today. We got the Oscars coming up this weekend. We're going to do our own little awards show. Yep. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. We, Perloffs always have a big party. Oh, you do? We watch the red carpet. We do hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, we don't dress up. We don't go that far. Yeah. But yeah, we're into it. Wait, what? So, what do you? Do you have a lot of people over? Like, what's the? Oh deal? no, 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 just the pearl. Oh, I was gonna but say because I'll I, make chili. You I know. never got an invite. <laughs> no, 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 it's just the pearl. Oh, got it. And when I say party, that means I buy guacamole and we get chips, and I'm <laughs> yeah. the only one to eat the guacamole. It's a yeah. tradition like no other. Yeah, when you have kids, the term party starts to get real fluid. Yeah, I can make a party out of anything. Yeah, Just absolutely. Make my kid excited. I'm like, it's a lollipop party, which means you get a lollipop. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> We're trying to make this into something to make you have a good day. Actually, with me, if you want to say, hey, it's a uh, watch the Sunday night football party, I'm in. Like, I, <laughs> because we don't party like we did when we were in our 20s. So anything, any excuses to sit there and watch TV is a party to me. How about this? My husband and I are going out to dinner this weekend. What do you think about wow. that? I know. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> I know. Where's the round of applause? When you say going out to dinner, you mean at a restaurant? Isn't that wild? That just the two of us. And we're going to a documentary movie premiere that I actually want to get your thoughts on. Yeah. Um, because the subject matter is something that, quite frankly, like terrifies me. Sharks? And this is No. Mm. Uh, that's you. <laughs> More uh. than me. Um, I just don't go in the water. But- it's a terrifying subject matter of this documentary, but I got to go because it's a really dear friend mm. who's directing it. Let's go to Sam, and then I'll tell you guys what the documentary is about. Sam's in York, Pennsylvania. We we're asking about the interest between the Steelers and Russell Wilson. Is it real, or is there something else going on? Sam, what's your take? Hey, guys. I uh, love the show. Uh, I, think, I think the interest is real, and... I don't know that it's to bring Russ in and immediately shove Kenny Pickett off to the side. I think when you look at when Tomlin drafted, when they drafted Najee, 
one of the first things Tomlin did was bring Cam Hayward sort of over and say, like, hey, like, bring this guy under your wing. Okay. I'm wondering if they're doing that sort of oh, situation. Oh, the mentor thing? Like, Sam. Yeah, and, and I know that yeah. doesn't, like, maybe Russ's personality doesn't really, like, play to that. Um, but I think at this point in his career, he's kind of on his last leg. Uh, did, is that sort of like Tomlin's idea? Is that what Omar Khan's thinking? Uh, what do you guys think? I'll take this one first. I, Sam, I appreciate it, and I, I think it's a good idea. And if you were running the team, I think your your head would be in the right direction. I don't think Russ is that guy. And I, I don't I, think that guy really exists at quarterback. How do you do that at quarterback? Because you, there's only one guy who gets on the field at a time. It's a little different with a, a defensive lineman and a running back. You know, I remember doing when I used to do a show with Bart Scott, he always thought that this was such BS because as a linebacker, he's like, the Ravens drafted my replacement twice. <laughs> and I was expected to mentor this person and show them the ropes so they could eventually move on from me and have this younger person come in. He goes, and the quarterbacks were never uh, required to do anything like that. You'll find some guys who are more gracious than others yeah. or, you know, in the retelling of the story, I'm sure that... In the retelling, I'm sure Tom Brady will be Garoppolo's mentor. In the retelling, Brett Favre is is Rogers' mentor. In the moment, it probably doesn't feel like that. And wow. so quarterbacks are different. I think Russ is also different where he's coming off an all-time failure and embarrassing thing in Denver. He's trying to get his reputation back. He's not there to hold the seat, keep it warm for Kenny Pickett. He's trying to get his Hall of Fame career back on track. Yeah, I, I also think the unique nature of quarterback that at all these other positions, you could even if you're a rookie, you play a little bit, right? right. It, you can't, you know, you can have Russ come in there and start 17 games for the Steelers and no Kenny Pickett at all, or vice versa. Right? There's just no way that this is a kumbaya. Russ is going to come in there. And I, I don't think that's going to happen. And you're right. I don't think Russ is that kind of person either. You know, to be honest, like even the guys who you think might be that guy are not that guy. Like Eli Manning wasn't that guy. He was a no chance, no way. Why? Well, uh, I'm not sure. I would. <laughs> Eli, the little brother, America's little brother. Why would you want him as a mentor? <laughs> I'm just saying he wasn't that guy. All right, can I tell you about the documentary that I'm going to see, and you guys tell me if this is something that would be interesting, intriguing to you, or if this would scare you? You ready? So this is a documentary about the astronauts who will be the next. Mm. Uh, people to be sent to Mars. Okay. So these are all about in the next decade, the NASA is going to start sending astronauts to Mars, right? To figure out whether this is some kind of, whether it's viable that if we all have to leave planet Earth, <laughs> we can all go to Mars. Or I don't know why, what they're doing. Wait, but they're, they're not just, they're not really sending astronauts. Astronauts are not going to Mars. In the next decade, this is NASA is going to send astronauts to Mars are for the first serious? time. Yeah, that's yes. happening. This wow. is happening. This is my friend's documentary. This is Sundance. Yeah. Like it's, it's happening. So this is all about when you go to Mars, apparently, you cannot communicate with Earth in real time. So there is a level of isolation mm -hmm. that is going to exist because these people, these astronauts are going to be doing three year stints in Mars, like going to going there, doing whatever science experiments you have to do and then coming back. All of it takes three years of this unprecedented isolation. So this is about the like NASA psychologists and the astronauts who are tasked with trying to prepare yourself for this unprecedented type of isolation. <gasps> right, like like Adam Sandler's Spaceman. The number one it. movie on Netflix, it is about he goes crazy and he, uh, spoiler, yeah. he has a wild imaginative life because <laughs> okay. he's isolated for four years. He goes to Jupiter, but wait a second, hold on the phone. They're not really going to Mars. This can't happen. I watched the Matt Damon movie. The, isn't Mars really far away? That's why. I, I, they're I, going, I man. So they're going to actually put human beings on the surface of Mars. That's the goal? I think that's happening. Yes. Yes. That's that's what they want to do. I will bet guys, you. Guys, we got to really start recycling. I can't wait. we got to save this planet because I don't want to go to Mars. I will bet you guys there is not a human being. And you you have to tell well, me after this argument, there's not a human being a on the surface, <laughs> surface of Mars. Loser within, goes to Mars. Within 10 years. I'll bet I'll you fly to Mars anything. apologize <laughs> to <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll hold up a sign. I'll, 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 I'll drive. Strong. You, but you, you can drive with me to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to be in the car for 30 hours. How about three years? <laughs> I want you to, you're going to evaluate too. For, you're right. The psychological stuff sounds terrifying, but I want your evaluation. Does this sound like a realistic plot by NASA? Because I would say there's no <laughs> way we're going to have human beings on Mars in 10 years. Have you heard like 
Musk and these guys talk about space? Yes, of course. Yeah, this, and those guys this, are those guys are out of their mind. I feel like they're, they're colonizing the moon was like ten years ago. Sorry. Yeah, they're, they're sending randos to space now. Like I don't think it's as hard as you think. <laughs> they got randos. Michael Strahan. Basically, it's a it's a very tall airplane flight. They they can barely even get off the earth. You know how far Mars is? I I I'm not buying it. No, no. Like each is right. Like they did list, literally said Michael Strahan. Like yeah, it, but yeah. it was like space ish. That's what I'm saying. Right, that's, that's, not, that's not NASA. That's just some rich guy. Imagine if like, NASA and the resources they have, they, they, can, they, they can get somebody to Mars. barely get over the ozone layer with Michael Strahan. I saw, like, the video of that. <laughs> yeah. It well, was not even that. It was basically a plane could almost go as high as Strahan Oh, they've went. been sending robots. They've been sending stuff to Mars. We've, we, we've been on Mars. It just hasn't been a human. Here you go. Just send, put Brett Favre on Mars, and then Strahan will go <laughs> sack him again for the title. <laughs> but the reason why all these crazy moon landing conspiracy theories exist, at least part of them, is because we don't take shuttle buses to the mo- to the moon by now. Like that's well, what f- fuels people's doubt that it never really happened. Do you really want to don't go it, there regularly? Do you want to get into why we don't go there regularly? I don't. I don't oh, know. No. Do I? Why is there some kind of conspiracy? Is there a about monster this? on moon? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of folks who. Oh, will, don't believe it's who, real. No, not oh. even that. We'll say that we went there and we got a message. Don't come back. Wait, what? From whom? <laughs> From really? figures that were on the moon. Did Kyrie Irving tell you this? No, this, this is no, this is stuff that's documented by people who are part of the space community. Oh, okay. I, I've never heard that. I've heard Me people neither. think that just the moon landings were all fake. Yeah, that I mean, obviously. You, I mean, try. Yeah, I mean, if you ask Neil Armstrong and Buzz and those guys, they, yeah, you can't tell them it's fake. But right. when you get them, why don't we go back? They're a little cagey and. So when they were hitting that nine iron off of the moon rocks, <laughs> somehow yeah. some alien told them, cut that slice and get the hell out of here? Why wouldn't, I, there's no way it was fake. There's no way. Because otherwise the Russians would have then also did it. Like, like that doesn't make sense to me. Right, so right. it was like, all right, well, what else is there? And I mean, is it, un, is it that crazy to think that there are other life forms outside of us in the app? No, no, you know, that's the not crazy. But right. I wonder if like, if you're like, why is the moon, the, you know, the cutoff? It's like, don't go past the moon. No, but. it's not even not go past the moon. It's that we went there and there may have been figures there that said. Oh, you think there were actual aliens on the moon? Why wouldn't you? Why not? No, I'm thinking if you got some, if you intercepted some kind of radio no, wave No, no, or no, something. not necessarily that. Just so, like that would just come to they, earth. They, too. they, they, and they. They encountered an environment that was hostile, which is why they won't go back. Then why were they playing golf up there and jumping around well, like it was yet. spring break? I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they just got there. I mean, I'm just, you, know, you is pull this up to, real? Sometimes you can pull up to a bad neighborhood and think that it's all sweet, and then and, <laughs> then, and, then, and, then, the, and the real people come out, and then you're like, oh, maybe we should, uh, you know, this is like warriors. Lock, lock, lock the doors, come and pull, out, pull, yeah, exactly. Lock the doors, pull up your <laughs> windows. Like, I mean, this is this is here comes Omar. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is a risk. All of a sudden, you get the, the music coming. It's the wire. EJ, you sound like a kid at the combine saying that. Uh, what did that guy say? Birds that aren't there, real. There is no space. Birds are fake. This is oh, yeah. way more realistic than birds aren't real. I've that they're monsters on the moon before. <laughs> well, because y'all, y'all ain't part of the conversations about space travel. I can almost well, I see not. the moon on a clear night. You can basically see the surface of the moon with your. Naked eyes. Right. You no don't one's think they would back. see these monsters. <laughs> I, must, dude, I didn't say they were monsters. I didn't say what they were. I didn't right. say what happened. I'm not allowed to say what they are. I don't because I don't know. But I'm saying also the government was going to turn off the lights. No, but there are a lot of folks who think that <laughs> right. the reason why we don't go back is because there's they, we we either the environment was hostile. We realized we probably shouldn't be sending humans here, or we got a message saying, "Hey, here's a question: Don't though. come back." If the aliens say they were hostile, right? And they got as far as the moon. Why wouldn't they just take the logical step forward and come and colonize Earth or blow well, up Earth? Or there's something? theories about that. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm con- listening. I'm con- <laughs> guy. Wow, they're walking amongst us. It's I like mean, men they, in black. They see how crazy Earth is, and they're like, "Why would we want to go with those Neanderthals?" I mean, seriously. <laughs> like, there, there are theories of why why that's the case. I know because God forbid you storm the court on a Thursday night, <laughs> and all of a sudden the aliens <laughs> are like, "I don't want any of that smoke." <laughs> um, no easy transition. Yeah. Andrew you don't Bogus think the aliens were judging you for being okay with a teenager getting hurt in those scenarios? <laughs> like, like, Maggie's cool with Kyle Philpowski being in harm's way. Did she, she just can't sacrifice come. a kid for cord storming? <laughs> yeah, we shouldn't go there. Um, 
All right. Hey, thanks, Maggie. Yeah. Uh, we have called <laughs> off the NBA Rookie of the Year debate. Wemby will win. Pearl will drive to San Antonio to apologize. Uh, and now EJ has eliminated Jason Tatum from MVP conversations. Just 15 points, 5 of 13 shooting for the Celtic star in a 115-109 loss in Denver. Jalen Brown did score 41 for Boston, but the problem remains. Nikola Jokic, 32 points, 12 boards, 11 assists. Chris Stapp's Porzingis tried to guard him. He's just an incredible basketball player. Uh, some things I learned from him today, actually. He's just so smart, so crafty. So many things that you don't see that he does on the floor that helps that team win. It's incredible. The Nuggets sweep the two-game season series from the league-leading Celtics. Steph Curry turned his right ankle late in the Warriors' 125-122 home loss to the Bulls. All Steve Kerr said post-game was that Curry had his foot in ice. The Suns took care of the Raptors' 120-113, KD scoring 35. Carl Anthony Towns is reportedly getting surgery for his left knee injury. He could, he mm. should be back on the floor early in the postseason. The T-Wolves okay without him last night, winning an Indy 113-111 with Anthony Edwards scoring 44 and blocking Aaron Neesmith's tying lay-in. In the final seconds. Now, Edwards made some other headlines recently by telling ESPN he's better than Shea Gilgis Alexander and Luka Doncic. LeBron had mentioned those three as the next faces of the league. SGA then told ESPN he's got no issue with Edwards' confidence. I expected him to say that. I wouldn't expect him to say one of us is better than him. The thing about NBA players and especially guys that are that talented, um, we all believe we're the best. We all believe what we bring to the table is special and unique, and he has every right to think so. And so you do too. Absolutely. And this is literally playing almost in sync on our TV right now. It's funny. I know. Yeah. Uh, Canadians, man, they just get it. So so pleasant. Like, yeah, of course he thinks he's the best, and I also do. I also and f- seen. Sometimes, like, it's also funny to be reminded. I, I know Shay is Canadian, but it's, you're very reminded when you hear him talk. Oh, right, that is Canadian brother. <laughs> like, that accent, you can't fake that. <laughs> oh, that, and just very calm demeanor. Like, no, uh, I don't know. Maybe act- Actually, maybe I'm selling short Canadian trash talk, because I'm sure the hockey players probably get after each other. Definitely. Yeah. I, I do feel like... Doesn't it feel a little bit like there's two people, three people in this picture, and one kind of doesn't belong, given the players and given what they've accomplished? Shea, Anthony Edwards, and... And Luca. And Luca. Anthony Edwards has not put up the numbers near what Shea and Luca have been doing. I know, but we get what he is, right? He uh, might, he's super talented. He's, like, amazing. Pro off is in a movie with him. I'm not sure he's a good <laughs> enough shooter. To be there yet, though, but you have don't you have to be I mean, a dead eye shooter? He hit his head on the on the and rim the other blocking yesterday, <laughs> blocking a shot. Hit his head on the rim, like he, with a bruise on a bruise on his head. He's a fantastic player, and in the Thunder of I mean, excuse me, the T Wolves have had a great season. It does feel like we kind of love the idea what Edwards can become, as opposed to right now what he is as a player. I just don't know if he's as impactful right now as Doncic is and as, as Shea Gillis. Well, so those guys are going to be top five MVP voting. I don't think Edwards is going to come close. Well, what with Carl Anthony Towns now out for a while, maybe Anthony Edwards really takes over. He's going to have to pick up the score. Yeah, for, for last night. Like, maybe maybe this is what we, he needed, honestly. Yeah, maybe. To me, though, the, the big difference, like the elite players, Kevin Durant, LeBron, those guys shoot are like around 50%, and Shea Gilgis is incredible. So he's over 54, and, yeah. Yeah, and Anthony's at 44. I think at the end of the day, he's just not the same shooter those guys are. So mm-hmm. and that's how, in the playoffs, you need to be a dead-eye outside shooter, and I don't think he's there. When the Bears gave corner Jalen Johnson the franchise tag on Tuesday, GM Ryan Poles said he was confident they'd get something done long-term, and they have. It's a reported four-year deal with $56 million guaranteed. Johnson doesn't turn 25 until next month. He was just second-team All-Pro. Messi and Luis Suarez scored in the second half to get into Miami, a 2-2 draw at Nashville SC to start their CONCACAF Champions League round of 16 match. They'll play the second leg in Miami on Wednesday. Men's College Hoops, fifth-ranked Arizona, won the Pac-12 regular season title outright with an 88-65 win at UCLA and number 18 Washington State losing to Washington. And the Carolina Hurricanes beat the Canadiens 4-1, then traded for Penguins winger Jake Gensel, one of the best available players ahead of this afternoon's trade deadline. Guys, back to you. I am in a rabbit hole right now that I got to – Dig myself out of. Of moon travel? Of moon colonies? Mm. Yeah. Like pre existing ones or us moving and living there? Oh, no, pre existing. Wow. I'm going to tell you, it's kind of flimsy. 
I well, mean, it's not, it's not my it's not my theory. I didn't come up with it. I'm just saying when we ask what the question, this is what a lot of people who follow this thing. Not right. a lot of people don't know what the hell's going on. I'm saying the people who are obsessed with this. Yeah. I I I, th- I think we're safe. I think we're cool. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's just not a little research. Well, 50 years we haven't been there. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> eh, what else are you going to do? I just thought it was pointless. <laughs> I thought there was yeah, nothing you there. the flag. Eh, yeah. We're good. Been there, done that. Meanwhile, I'll let you go. You guys know how this documentary turns out. Yeah. I, isolation for NASA I was astronauts about, like, going to Mars. 10 years? Yeah. That ain't happening. I mean, this would be the ultimate show, but <laughs> The question is, the question, <laughs> I'm reading on astronomy.com, the real question is ever. Hmm. It is not easy to get to Mars. That is a long, long road trip. Would you go through Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> Everything goes from Chicago. Are, are there breakfast tacos on the moon? <laughs> well, they're a little worried you have to wait at, at O'Hare for a long time, depending on air traffic. You're missing that connection, 100%. 855, thank you, Bogus. 855-2124-CBS. Uh, what's easier, getting to Mars or trying to get paid as a running back? We've got some possibilities where Saquon Barkley is going to land. Is it going to matter? Is he a difference maker? We do that next. Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining.
One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back. Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. I almost texted you about this one, Perloff. Middle of the day. The Saquon Barkley to the Eagles, quote-unquote, a real possibility. The idea that maybe Philadelphia is trying to build this sort of dream team part two. Remember how well part one went? Yeah. Yikes. So the Eagles, the Saquon, I don't like it. I get such dream team 2011 vibes. Bring in skill position players. Uh they might go after Justin Simmons. They're going to go after a high-priced defensive back, just like Namdi Asamoah. <laughs> yeah. uh, all you need. And by the way, I actually Where's think, Vince Young? I think that they might get in the market for backup quarterbacks and bring in a big name like Vince Young. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> I mean, I, where's Vince right now? You know, because the Eagles tend to sometimes they'll make a move at quarterback that you don't expect. Vince Young came in to backup was Vic, right? Yep. That is a. Yeah, I get Wait, a total. What about Russell buy. Wilson? That would bring in. That would bring out. I was actually thinking things. Russell Wilson was the name I thought. I'm like, ooh, if Wilson's going to take a backup job, Jalen Hurts has been his knee has never really been steady. That'd be a good one for him. So yeah, I feel like the Eagles were desperate after last year, and Howie Roseman went up to the podium and said, "Our main problem was that we lost all our free agents last year, but we're going to make sure that doesn't happen this year. They're going to try and buy their way back into the Super Bowl. Can it work? Help me out. Make me feel good. Well. Here's the thing about Barkley. You know, I just don't trust it because he can't stay healthy enough. I, I get that he's got all the talent, but I can't give that guy $8 million because, unfortunately, his history has shown that not only is it hard for him to stay on the field consistently, but it is also kind of hard for him to get back because he pushes himself. This is, a, in some ways, kind of a credit to him. He pushes himself so hard to get back on the field, and then he does, and he's not the same. He's not 100%. Yeah. And for his style of running, which is like the cutbacks and the trying to dance and the trying to break one you know, to the house, if you don't have full trust in your knee, your ankle, or something, it's not going to work. You're not a ground and pound kind of running mm. back. That's not his style. So it's not the three yards in a cloud of dust type of thing. He's a Which the Eagles don't want anyway. But Okay, but I'm yeah. saying he's, he's a... Fine I say finesse, that's gonna sound like a insult to him because he's a he's a tough dude. Right. But he's uh you know, you have to be a full hundred percent of your faculties, your lower body to make the kind of cuts and cutbacks that he does that make him special, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, but he's only gonna cost him what, seven or eight million though. Uh again, I I'd rather have Josh Jacobs. That's me. Oh no, 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 no. Jacobs, they they used him too much. In Vegas. So how, what, what kind of, you're not signing him to a five year deal. You're signing him for two years. But at the honestly, most. if you're going to get, I mean, DeAndre Swift was kind of awesome there last year at a thousand yards. I think it was third or fourth in the league in rushing. Uh, I think Saquon with the, a little bit more home run ability, but this is just part of a bigger thing for the Eagles. They're, they're going all, this could be a Rams all in year, and Saquon's part of that. I mean, they, I would not sleep on them to make the Snead trade or the Brian Burns trade. Like they wow. want to, they want to go in. And the funny thing is, Saquon, just like the Dream Team in 2011, we overrated the skill position players. Like, that's just a piece. Saquon, is he's almost a role player with that Eagles team, right? Because they're, they're never going to be handing the ball off. They're always going to be focused around Jalen Hurts. Well, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. So he'll be a little piece there. That, that's $8 million's a lot for a little piece, considering DeAndre Swift cost you a million? Yeah, I know. I, it's a good point. But I mean, considering LeJarrius Sneed is going to cost someone $25 million, I I think an $8 million running back is somewhat minor. But the 
the optics of signing Saquon Barkley, everyone's going to think about that signing when it's really only a small thing. Well, and that'd be the same if he decides to go to the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, if there's same. any kind of interest between Dallas and Saquon Barkley. Honestly, I, EJ, you've said it. I, I do think Houston is the better spot. Yep. But again, it's about the health of the player. It's actually not about where he goes. The one thing, though, about Saquon's health that I think I would I would maybe defend him a little bit on is some of these injuries, particularly the ankle injuries he's had. I mean, though some of those are freak kind of injuries. Like, okay, you someone lands on your ankle and then you sprain it, you're out for four or five weeks. Oh, no, I'm not saying he's injury prone. I'm right. saying he has dealt with them a lot and right. he's only getting older. Right, he has dealt with them and you do wonder, does he become a guy who becomes more brittle as he gets older? But if he goes to a place like Philly or even a place like Houston, which I love, I think that's definitely the fit for him for me. You're not going to be asking him to do all the stuff that the Giants were asking him to do. I mean, he was literally carrying an offense on his back. I mean, and this is an off. Those are offenses where the defense is new. We stop Saquon Barkley, we win the football game. Sure. That's not going to be the case in Houston, and it's not going to be the case in Philadelphia. My concern with the Eagles, though, is that locker room is clearly fractured. That locker room clearly has issues. Do you want? Mm. Do you want? the hoopla of a quote-unquote dream team around these guys right now. Like, that team needs to lay low. That team needs to kind of get people back by surprise. I don't think they want all the cameras, all the attention on them saying, oh, look, the Eagles are going to make this big comeback. Like, I, I mean, they need a talent upgrade, so I'm not saying don't make good moves to help your football team, but that dream team thing yeah, wasn't no. just bad because of the guys they signed and how poorly they played. It was also just like all the attention and all the spotlight, everything yeah. on that team. They kind of became what the Jets were this past season. That's the last thing I think this Eagles locker room needs. I've decided I, I am now, I've been thinking about this. I think the leadership problems on Philly maybe be overrated because you, you guys saw it. They could not tackle a single human being once they got past three yards past the line of scrimmage. It was just like run into the end zone. So I, I think it's a personnel problem. But that being said, it's there's a reason Saquon Barkley's in free agency. There's a reason that Justin Simmons got cut. There's a reason. Well, that was a cap casualty for real. Right, right but nobody's 31. Yeah. So there's a reason. So when you bring in these dream teams too, you're spending a lot of money for older players. And that's really, I think, a big problem too. I, I think smart teams, the Patriots never did this. They always went young and cheap. I feel like the dream team, it, there is that locker room thing. I'm not as worried about that as, wait, there's a reason that Saquon's available. There's a reason that all these guys are available. When you spend on these older guys, it never works out. Yeah. I, let's touch on the locker room aspect of this because, first of all, Philadelphia is the type of place where fan base is, you know, unforgiving, I would say, if they smell a little blood in the water. Like, the, it's not, no one's going to be naturally positive about the team. But how does that affect their play, though? Well, because it adds pressure from the outside, just like uh, I think that's real. A.J. Brown literally called a radio station two yeah. weeks ago to defend himself. But he's a wide receiver. They're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you have – what I'd be worried about a little bit with Philadelphia is Jason Kelsey's exiting the building. Jalen Hurts isn't a vocal leader. Nick Sirianni is sometimes a genius and sometimes a joke and has his own issues in terms of keeping his emotions in check on the sidelines. And – when things started to roll downhill, nobody could get them back on track. And you had a lot of veteran guys in there. You have Fletcher Cox. You have Brandon Graham. You have guys left over from the Super Bowl and from the Halcyon Times. So, and you made the Super Bowl last two years ago, and they still couldn't get this thing right. Well, I think that there's going to be new coaches. So you have Vic Fangio, who they wanted last year. He's coming in. Yeah, who one of the Dolphins players basically literally told him to kick rocks on the day that he left. The Dolphins can't stand Vic Fangio. I mean, Jalen Ramsey was saying stuff about how yeah. they use Xavier Howard poorly. Yeah, that being said, like, uh, does this a player hates a coach? That's what I'm. That's what I'm all about. Yeah, uh, you're supposed <laughs> you to hate. That. You're supposed to hate the coach. Uh, and Kellen Moore is a gigantic. I mean, their play calling was. Awful last year. But the bottom line is they dropped from the number two overall defense to the number 26 overall defense. And a lot of it was they had problems in the secondary. Oh, no, so you got to they, spend that. All they had tons of injuries, but also you just mentioned the two yeah. new coordinators, yeah. Vic Fangio and Kellen Moore. Huge kinda upgrade. At, sure. Also adds to the sort of dream teamy part of it because yeah. those are two guys who – fans really know, and we don't know a ton of offensive and defensive coordinators. You're just casual NFL fan. We all know Kellen Moore. Yeah. We all know Vic Fangio. That, it's just been really, really hard for the Eagles to recover from Shane Steichen leaving and probably Jonathan Gannon leaving. You lose both. This is what happens. You lose both. Coor you make the Super Bowl. You lose both coordinators. Well, I was we'll told see. Jonathan Gannon didn't know his you-know-what from his yeah, elbow. Yeah, I know, so. I know. I, but the, then you know, CJ Gardner-Johnson, uh, Javon Hargrave, 
it's real. I mean, you can't lose these guys. The salary cap is real, even though it seems like it isn't at times. So I think if they get the right personnel, they'll fix everything. Am I picking them for the Super Bowl? No way. I'm all about the Lions and the Niners. But I think they're going to be better than last year. Their defense, they were 26 overall, but their met, their DVOA was 31st. I mean, that's crazy, right? Their defense was awful, and everyone's blaming Jalen Hurts. What's the difference? I mean, anybody could score 40 points on them. There was a sideshow element to the Eagles, though, with the big dom and getting into a Drake Greenlaw. There, the thing about Philadelphia sports in general yeah. is it's never just like straightforward bad, right? <laughs> like with the 76ers, it always has to be this drama and that guy, you know, the uh, not wanting to play, showing up, practicing with a cell phone in his pocket because he's waiting for his agent, James Harden. It could just it, right. Was, but if you win, then who cares? Right? Well, that's fine. Yeah. But you don't even think they're going to win. So, but the I'm, year before, there was probably sorts, all sorts of craziness going on. When you win, all that stuff gets masked. Right. But what I'm saying is, there's it's never when it goes sa- south or sideways yeah. in Philadelphia. It's never just like oh, you're bad in obscurity. It's always mm. an interesting wrinkle or a. St- story or uh yeah something like philly always has something and last year i thought the big dom nick sirianni nick sirianni's doing a press conference at the end of the year where a reporter asked what exactly do you do around here yeah. and he was like didn't really have a great answer <laughs> that insane. being said that being said when nick sirianni and we weren't doing the show when he got hired had that really awkward press conference you probably thought he was a bad coach i don't know if he was a bad coach i didn't know him but I thought, wow, this guy is not really has not had to speak in front of the media before, yeah. and he hasn't gotten a lot better at that. But I think he shocked a lot of people by getting the Eagles to the Super Bowl. I know, but you kind of made it seem like it was the coordinators, and it was taking play calling responsibilities away from Nick Sirianni that helped the yeah. Eagles get to the playoffs. I just think the circus stuff is is not really what's going on here, and in fact, that Sirianni. I don't care if he has the worst press conference on earth sure. because he's done that before. They've still won games. But then my question to Pearl then yeah. is why do the Eagles players keep suggesting that is an issue? Because you had Lane Johnson talking about, well, you got that position group over there that's sulking their heads and showing bad body language while the offensive line is doing the job correctly. Yeah. You got A.J. Brown calling radio call, radio uh, stations saying, hey, my leadership is good. Get off my back. You have Jalen Hurts saying, well, our guys aren't prepared enough or focused enough during the week because the defense gave up on the season they were just they and it happened right, way before saying, right but like and they are saying that they i'm not gonna say they're not saying that execution wasn't a problem they were but they kept also talking about that other stuff that has nothing to do with stuff on the field so yeah, if but that's, that's the, the case then why they're talking about it I, who cares it's the players what i mean they, they it has nothing game. to do you need great coaches honestly matt patricia was their defensive coordinator by the end of the year you guys forgetting that how on earth are you gonna win games that way again circus element to every little thing that happened. 855-2124-CBS coming up. Who's the new favorite to land Justin Fields? Surprise team, we'll tell you. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He's been on the TB12 method since he was six. She's on her third scotch. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Well, this was interesting. Welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. Perloff, we've been talking about NFL quarterbacks in the offseason. One of the big names that's likely going to get moved is Justin Fields. Yeah, so we originally we thought Pittsburgh or Atlanta, and then <laughs> Pittsburgh and Atlanta have been sending out a lot of a lot of messages to somebody that it's not going to be Justin Fields. <laughs> right. It looks like they're zo- kind of zoned in on Kirk Cousins if you're talking about the Falcons. And who knows what's going on with the Steelers. You got a report yesterday. They're bringing Russell Wilson in for a meeting, allegedly. And they've also thrown their weight behind Kenny Pickett. And they've also talked really nicely about Mason Rudolph. So who knows? But if the Minnesota Vikings do not bring back Kirk Cousins, the next favorite for quarterback for them to land is Justin Fields. So yes. I think this is wild for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, would you actually have the stones to trade this guy in the division and in some way in whatever universe, if Caleb Williams flames out and Justin Fields is awesome, you are going to be reminded of this decision twice a year for the end of time. Well, the Bears probably know more about Justin Fields than anyone. So if they do do this trade within the division, it says that they are not scared of Justin Fields. Uh, according, so he's a favorite three to one at Bet Online. Philly sent Donovan McNabb to Washington. That's late in his career, though. late in his career, and 
you, you might remember this, the Patriots sent Bledsoe to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. So it's happened twice. I, what I don't happened think, when Bledsoe with the Bills? Not not a lot of winning. Yeah, I think that that's what the Bears expect with Justin Fields to the Vikings. I mean, the uh, these are not great options here. According to BetOnline.org, Justin Fields is 3-1. to one, Trey Lance is 4-1, to one, and we have not really seen him in action in a while. Josh Jobs is 3rd. On it, and then any rookie QB is five to one. Hey, let's throw in any rookie QB. <laughs> He's five to one, and the other names on here: Minshew, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Baker Mayfield. I don't really know. You know, Justin Fields is not an ideal option, but if you look at it from the Vikings standpoint, do you want Justin Fields? You have Justin Jefferson. Got to get him ball. Is Justin Fields your guy? No, I need a rookie. And I, there was a mm, okay. report. If I'm going to do this, well, maybe. I mean, you can get any rookie at five to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can I get any rookie? Like, well, how about a combo? Why don't you get Justin Fields, probably a third round pick, and draft somebody uh, in the teens? Again, I don't love Fields as a bridge option because you have to make a decision on that fifth year option after this year. And if you if he plays great, and the fan base is going to say, "All right, pick up the option," he's our guy. So, what you're going to have Michael Penix sitting behind him, or kind of like have... the when the Cardinals had Josh Rosen at ten and they drafted Kyler Murray anyway? <laughs> yeah, Josh Rosen was there for five seconds longer and. <sighs> It doesn't. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But that's a decent proposal. If Justin Fields is awesome to the point where you have to pay him millions of dollars, then hey, isn't that right, something no, that's that, very good? It means it worked out. But wouldn't if I'm the Bears and if the Vikings are interested, I am going to make. I'm going to give you an NFC North tax because I'm going to make you overpay mm. for Justin Fields. Because if I'm going to get in any way, if there's even a two percent chance I get burned on this and he ends up being the better quarterback than Caleb Williams, I need to at least do something to save face. I at least had to fleece you in the deal. Yeah, but I don't think they're going to be able to do that because they're not getting any offers for Justin Fields. Is what know. everyone is... Right. Well, the, you know, there's all... All of a sudden, there's reporting out of Chicago. Maybe they'll hold on to Justin Fields because they can't get anything for him. I guess who's probably saying that? The Bears. The Bears are putting it out there like, oh, there's this market for Justin Fields. It just seems like there's not. Right. So maybe if the Viking. Uh, you know, the Vikings offer a second and they might have to do that. Also, I don't think young GMs care about division stuff anymore. Well, we saw TJ Hawkinson got traded in yeah. the division, right? Um, yeah, but that's young different. GMs, they don't, the rivalries in the history doesn't mean anything to Ryan Poles or doesn't mean anything to Kwesi, right? The, it feels like the trend in sports, and I'm not the first person to say this, is it's okay to trade with your rivals because rivalries don't exist anymore. This is an analytic driven NFL. Um, I mean, that's really kind of being tone deaf to the fan base, I would imagine. Uh, I know it yeah, happens the, in certain instances, but those never came back to really backfire on the team that traded them away. Drew Bledsoe going to the Bills, yeah. Donovan McNabb going to Washington. That No one felt the backlash there. This is a lot different. Justin Fields is 25, 26 years old. This one could come back to bite you. I hear you, but if you, you know, these guys, these young guys are all about the analytics. If the numbers say this is a good deal, they'll do it. I don't think they care about the fan base at all. They, they're just looking for the best possible deal they can get. No, but I think they're still worried about their own jobs. And whether you care that about the fan a, base, that is a good point. you want to stay employed, and you're taking a major risk that Kevin O'Connell with Justin Fields is, and Justin Jefferson and mm. Jordan Addison is going to rub this in your face till the end of time. Um, and for So, the, but here's it. Well, what if no other team emerges for Justin Fields? Because it's not Atlanta. Right. It's not Pittsburgh. Then I hold Edison. on to him and think that maybe with an injury, someone trades me something, which stinks because then the draft will have passed. Yes. What if you hold on to him and he's there at the start of training camp or week one? Then you have a bit of a circus on your hands. You might, but I think that I would not make this a true competition. Like, it's like when mm. Trey Lance and Jimmy G were there together. It once the 49ers, I know this is ill this is old history now, but once the 49ers had Trey Lance and Jimmy in the building, they basically banished Jimmy. Now they ended up needing him, yeah. but they, he wasn't going to meetings, he wasn't on the practice field. They tried to get him as far away from Trey Lance as possible, and I would imagine the Bears would try to do a similar playbook. Well, back to your original point though, Justin Fields is a twenty four year old former first round quarterback. I think everyone knew Jimmy G was on his way down. Uh, career-wise, I think it's a tricky situation. Uh, having Justin Fields there competing with Caleb Williams is not ideal. And you have no. a coach who's in, on the hot seat. This is, I think that's too much. I would I, almost get rid of him for a fourth-round pick instead of doing that. I was just thinking about this. Do you think the Bears are a hard knocks possibility? Uh, I don't know. What's the, uh, there's all those hard knock rules. I know one is if you, 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 if you miss the playoffs, I know you're in contention. Do rookie quarterbacks ever go on hard knocks? I think they do, right? 
I have to double check. You well, double check the, uh, the hard knocks. Baker Mayfield. Was they, he the rookie though, or was, was that rookie, second year? No, he was a rookie because I remember Hugh Jackson was like chewing him out for like not being a professional. And Jared Goff was that. definitely a rookie. Was but Jared Goff a rookie? Jared Goff was 100% a rookie. I think he was. Okay. Case, yeah. Case was there, I remember. And, oh, okay. And my friend Kimberly Keenum got a lot of star time on that one. But that being said, uh, you know, the rules have changed though on Hard Knocks. I, I think they in, in, initiated all those rules. That'd be a good one. Oh, yeah. Especially if Fields is there. Fields and Caleb together. I mean, oh, the, man. the Bears were, I think, the alternate team that they would have wanted if the Jets didn't do it this year. And the Bears didn't want to do it either. Well, but, nobody like, wants to do it. Right. I know. But I'm saying, like, they were one of the teams, I think, that... Because I think it was, like, Jets, Bears. Like, they want nothing to do with the Commanders. Commanders were the, one of the teams that would have been in the conversation. But they, the Bears would have been the second choice. God, can you imagine if the Bears... Uh, if they had an in-season hard knocks, remember the Bears had that weird thing with the defensive coordinator. Yes, and they have <laughs> I Eber remember Flus. it well. Eberflus a bit of a character, and I don't know what the deal is with Luke Getze last year. That would have been a good hard knocks. Yeah, remember Justin Fields came out and said, I just have to start playing like myself. I mean, it was an interesting couple weeks there for the Bears. So anyway, circling back to Justin Fields, found it interesting that if the Minnesota Vikings don't land Kirk Cousins, the next favorite would be Justin Fields to go to Minnesota. Now, one cool thing, if you are the Vikings, that maybe you breathe a little sigh of relief, it doesn't feel like Justin Jefferson is going to be playing a lot of hardball here. Like, oh, I, you know, if the quarterback isn't right, I'm not going to resign. The latest reporting there is that he's going to resign no matter what. How much? Well, probably the moon. The moon, yeah. which might be colonized, as we <laughs> found out. Meanwhile, the chat's having a field day with that. YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio. Twitch.tv slash CBS Sports Radio. I like, I like your plan. I'm going with the Maggie Gray plan. Draft somebody at a, at 11, like Kevin O'Connell, who's a really good quarterback coach, develop him, sort of start over. Especially if it's someone like Penix, who, and Whoa. again, I don't know if Penix is going in the first round, but if Penix is there, he's like 26. So <laughs> you think 26. he's... Is he not 26? He's 20, 23. Oh, he seems 26. He's an older, uh, mature quarterback. <laughs> he's, you know, maybe, and he, and he throws a really catchable ball, at least in college. Yeah, and an indoor stadium feels right for Michael Penix for some reason. Sure. Yeah, I mean, he can he can get the ball out to Justin Jefferson. Uh, you know, here's a question. Could you get Penix in the second round at that spot? They're 11 in the first round, I assume they're... So, I like it. I, I don't, I'd rather do that probably than Justin Fields because, you're right, this 3-1 to one bet, I'm not taking it. You get 5-1, to one, I think we should do this on betonline.org. Any rookie. Dot .ag, not org. <laughs> dot .ag. Yeah. Oh, dot .org. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that official. I knew it wasn't dot .com. <laughs> I, I think that uh, any rookie at 5-1 to one is really sweet. But then again, Josh Dobbs at 9-2, to two, is he still... Where is Josh Dobbs? Maybe on that the, guy you in that NASA keep, documentary. You I'm cannot keep track of where that guy is playing at any given moment. No, but he should be one of the top backups who's signed this year. Yeah. Okay. So let's make that bet. Who's, who's with us? Let's tally some money any rookie um okay so you're welcome to also in justin fields where do you think is the right place for him because it looks like the compensation in terms of trading for him could be dropping a lot yes. um so maybe that makes him a lot more appealing to more teams um i just noticed something two hours and four minutes that's how much time is left to vote on our poll at maggie and pearl on twitter but whether or not EJ and myself have to be wearing matching outfits to WrestleMania when we pay off our bet that we lost to Perloff. So we're wearing wrestling singlets to WrestleMania because we have to go for maximum embarrassment and we are going to look like fools. EJ, you realize these photos are going to live on the internet forever. I mean, look, scared money don't make none, so... Do you put, know, put it all on the line. This is what's going to happen. Like, anytime the show will now make news from here on out once these photos hit the internet, I just want to let you know, this is the photo that the New York Post is going to use when something <laughs> happens to this show. And Perloff, I'm sorry, you're going to have to be associated with that by extension. But we could, like, become the number one radio show in America. This is the photo they're going to use. I just want you to know what we're stepping into because I've had a little experience with this kind of thing before. I mean, given the photos that get put out there, and it, it could be worse. It could be worse. Can it? Yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah. right now, matching singlets is leading by a lot. Oh, yeah. So you and I are going to have to get on the same page. Bogus is here. Good morning. Well, I just had a quick question. I'm glad you brought this up. And I would, and it's just not even a. An objection. I'm just wondering out loud. And okay. I need help from You're my just asking questions. esteemed wrestling partner, 
Peter the body Bilotti for this. Now, hi Andrew. The point of this penalty was to be embarrassed, right? Yeah. And you just laid out how you could be embarrassed after the fact. But in my mind, at WrestleMania, you're not. You're going to be in the majority of people who are in some form of costume. So are you actually going to stand – will they stand out mm. and be mocked? To me, it's like going to Comic-Con as Superman. You're just another Superman. You're not the weirdo dressed like a superhero. So, <laughs> Right, like we should have to wear this to the grocery store. You know we have to wear the here, headgear so too. Boomer mocks you or yeah. I get to laugh at it. But sure. at, at, at the link, you're going to be one of the people in a singlet. That's Is that actually, a big deal? That, that's actually a good point. I, I feel that maybe they should wear it the whole time they're in Philly. Ooh. <laughs> oh, like go, oh, to, no. go to a cheesesteak joint oh. in South Philly. Oh, first right. of all, why, like, right. first of all, is our safety no, no, going to be like... Listen, I'm just asking EJ. Yeah, he's just asking questions. <laughs> yeah, Bogus right. is coming in with false information. There are not multiple, the majority of people wearing costumes. Are they wearing wrestling shirts, wrestling mm. oh, gear? Okay. Well, sure. Well, wrestling well. costume? No, that's not happening. Hey, don't forget, <laughs> we're wearing the headgear, too. <laughs> The the wrestling dress, head. Yeah. Dress, you mean wrestling costume dressed like they are a wrestler? You're <laughs> right, saying? Exactly. Yeah. Man, nobody's like, oh, I'm wearing the Rock's ring attire. Like that's not happening. <laughs> okay, that's what. That's why I was asking. I have never been well, to WrestleMania. Some people do. Right, yeah, so, I imagine some do. Some do, but that's a right. I wouldn't put. I wouldn't put that percentage above fifteen percent. Now, there's a whole lot of champions. I will say that there. Whenever you go to a wrestling show, uh, everyone decides to buy these very expensive uh, replica belts. Mm -hmm. So oh, they wait, walk, you own one of them. I, I, I but it's at my house. Right. In my in my office. last case, that's where it is. I don't wear it around New York City. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I'm, of, I'm, <laughs> I'm of a belief that if you're going to wear this belt, you should have to defend it every time you're out. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe Maggie or EJ can challenge somebody for one of these belts. Oh God, wow. we're not going to come. Do you realize not that's not just challenging someone with the belt? That's in Philadelphia. Mm. Yeah, we're not winning that fight. We're going to die. Give it a shot. No. Give it a shot. I've been where, by the way, so I, I as a kid, would go every month. I think it was every month to the Spectrum to watch WWE. Huge fan. And I'd always wear my Roddy Piper t-shirt. And Roddy Piper was a bad guy, but 100% of the Philadelphia crowd cheered for Roddy Piper. Of course. It was, it was, there was no doubt yeah. about that. Uh so is wearing, uh, if I, can I show up in a kilt? How about that? Piece? What would you think of that? That would be appreciated probably by the, by the wrestling crowd. I just, I feel yeah. like if we stepped to somebody in Philadelphia holding a wrestle, a WWE championship belt, you know what the ground meat looks like on a cheesesteak? Yeah. That's what we're going to look like. Yeah. Somebody is going to take physical harm to us. Yeah, no, this is, uh. You guys have no chance. You ever see Silver Linings Playbook when Bradley Cooper gets beat up in the parking lot of an Eagles game? Yeah. You might want yeah. to watch that before you challenge <laughs> exactly. anyone there. Exactly. Or that's like what we're going to look like just hanging out if we have to wear the, the wrestling thing that's in Philly the whole time. Do people get hammered at WrestleMania? Because in Philly, they probably will. They uh, are this year. Well, in more ways than one. Yeah, do they get drunk? I mean, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. It's a big party. Wait, if I can't get blackout drunk, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah, by the way, that's a great advice for you. I, I would have, is there a place to put a flask in a singlet? <laughs> <laughs> is it too late to get a custom made? <laughs> yeah, I, I would be as. Uh, yeah, there's not going to be any place to hide it. As anesthetized as possible, Maggie, for this one. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I do like the image, though, that. Um, EJ and Maggie are going back to the, get a cup of coffee and Boomer walks in and, and Maggie or EJ is sitting there wearing a singlet. It's that a, is pretty fun. It's always <laughs> the maximum height of embarrassment when it's Boomer Esiason. Everyone else around here has had to do crazy stuff. Yeah. Like Boomer has somehow managed to do radio and television for 25 years. Yeah. I've never seen him in a costume no. or had to paint his face or pay mm, off some weird bet. Man. I know. He's like up above the front. Well, he did that actually commercial where his face was painted just now. He, oh, did, the, yeah, they, he did, did the hangover. He did the hangover. <laughs> and, that the, was, and he looked cool. It was a Super Bowl <laughs> promo, which was really well executed. Yeah. And Boomer wakes up with the Super Bowl logo tattooed on yeah, his yeah. forehead. But it was actually, he looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it was definitely. <laughs> I would just want to see how you guys would try to carry off a casual conversation wearing a singlet and not address it with Boomer's <laughs> eyes. Be like, yeah, cold out. Uh, Looks like it's going to be rain later today. And see, <laughs> see if you can not say anything yeah. about your own singlet. It was like, hey, did you catch the next game last night? <laughs> Remember, oh, what was boy. that outfit that I had to wear where I was looking over your shoulder and you almost called HR bogus? Your Halloween costume. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. The short Halloween shorts. Costume. That was yeah. what you decided to wear. That wasn't even paying off a bet. Right. We all did this was on our George own. Best? What was his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah soccer best. player. 
Yes, that was a Chris Jones running at the combine situation. <laughs> <You> <laughs> wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason Kelsey laid out very clearly yeah. the yeah. differences. I think. <laughs> oh, that would boy. have been a police matter <laughs> had that thing fallen on me, not just HR. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Also, Bogus just has to sit quietly in the corner for a while <laughs> and contemplate life. What? <laughs> Why is Bogus knocked out? <laughs> Why is he lying on the floor? It's a standing eight count. We're bringing a national golf. The subway, just bring him right <laughs> here to, to the studio. Oh my god, 855-212-4 CBS. All right, so the bottom of the moral of the story you still have two hours to vote if you'd like EJ and I to wear not matching singlets. Uh, let your voice be heard. At I, Maggie Pearl. I also want to piggyback on what Bogus is saying. I'd like to see more of the singlet, I'd like you guys to wear it more. We'll I don't know how we do this. Listen, Maybe lose another bet. Well, I, I'll say this. Whenever something happens that's a holiday, it happens on a weekend, there's usually a company holiday for it the Monday or the Friday before. <laughs> uh, so maybe they can wear the singlet the Friday before. Yes. Okay. You know, Pete, it's a great point. You're right. And if we're going to actually buy these things, they're not cheap. We should get more than one use out of it. Just test them out. <laughs> also, can I make some advice? Yeah, like 150 I, bucks on this thing. Yeah, yeah, Where one time. Yeah. I would buy it quickly because I think you want to try that on. I don't think you want to <laughs> unopen the package on Friday before WrestleMania and find out it's a size too small. <laughs> find, find a spot for uh, Jägermeister or whatever. Well, my question is, I'm like, all right, if I wear this, then could I donate it to, like, Goodwill? Yes. Oh, They're not going to want it. I was going to say, like, it's like donating a bathing suit. Singlet. I mean, I'm going to wear underwear, but you know what I mean? I shouldn't say stuff like this it's on the air. I should just let people not. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go through my thought process with this. You just got about twelve DMs going. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, actually, I can now sell that, and I'm quitting the show. Wait, do men wrestlers wear anything under their singlet? I don't know. I would. And, and a hush fell over the crowd. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. I know more about the Iditarod than that. I've always thought so. amateur wrestling was a little too intimate for my taste anyway. I never really wanted to be an amateur wrestler. I was always shocked when I found out, this is y'all's territory, not mine, but I was shocked when I found out how many football players don't wear cups. Oh, yeah. No, no I've never met anyone who wore a cup. Yeah, right. Why would you wear Cups are weird. Well, they obviously, they seem weird to the outsider. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So let's get intimate here. Mm. I've never understood jock straps. What do they do? What do you mean you don't understand them? Like why? What do uh, they do? In seventh grade, it's, what, what's the difference between a jock strap and underwear? I've never totally understood it. It's just underwear without a back on it, right? I thought uh, it's yeah. holding you put, the cup. You put a cup in a jock strap. Yeah, yeah, but you can also wear it without the cup just for the like yeah, to keep everything together. But mm. that, it, to me, it doesn't provide the level of support that you need. There are people who wear jock straps without cups. Yeah. I, like to the office? No, like gym class <laughs> right. in seventh yeah, nice. In seventh grade, they said you should wear a jock <laughs> strap in gym class. I was like, well, what that was not my experience growing up. I mean, they probably <laughs> thought that things bouncing around wasn't safe, so they wanted you to keep it all but in a nice little pouch. Is it the same as tidy whiteies? You just have no. If like, you, right, if you wear tidy whiteies, but some people don't wear that. See, I this guess. is where technology has really helped you guys because now you got the spandex. You're basically wearing bike shorts. That's that's what my son has for baseball, and I'm yes. so jealous. They're yeah. sliding shorts and they're boxer briefs, and they hold this cup as opposed to the old school yeah. jacket, which is which is one of the worst things ever. Your yeah, compression shorts are awesome, EJ. You probably everybody wore compression shorts when you were playing ball. Uh, he's younger. Though. It was becoming a thing. Okay, because I played you know high school like I graduated in '09, so it was becoming like the wave. I had teammates wearing compression shorts. It was like yeah. that was like the the kind of the Beginning of it. Yeah. Love, now, love compression, love compression shorts, compression underwear. Now all the all. women wear one leg uh, compression pants. Or, yeah. Yeah. That's so that. cool. The women's college basketball trend of wearing just one leg, like the compression shorts, but literally just one leg. Angel yeah. Reese did it last year. Now I feel like every woman's doing it. It's so it's stylish. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it looks cool yeah. as hell. But now you're kind of fu- copying. I don't know if Angel came up with it, but. And which leg do you pick? I don't know. Because like at least when for baseball you wear one on like your throwing arm, but I don't have a you know I don't even have jumping well, leg in like basketball. A, if you have like a sore calf, sore knee. Well, that but it's bulky. for the look. Right? Yeah. Well, no, but I'm saying, but I mean, but even these athletes, not that they're injured, but you probably have a knee that's worse than the other, yeah, or sure. a, a, you know, a calf that's worse than the other. Like I would assume. Oh yeah. You would pick make that choice. Oh, NBA players have more like things on their legs than any you you know you have protective ankle guards and then like you have a knee thing. yeah well when i do yoga when i do yoga my girlfriend's a yoga teacher and when i go to classes like all the women are jealous because i have the compression long tights with the knee pads um oh. because my knees don't do well even on like a mat like the wood is too hard like my knees don't do well with it and they're all like 
that's the most brutal thing I've ever seen. I'm like, well, every NBA player wears them. <laughs> so I just like I just seen like a common sense thing. And now I actually have people say, hey, where did you get those? I got to buy those. Are these big old school knee pads? Are they? No, no. Yeah, they're, like they're compression long yeah. tights. And they're, they're, the knee pads are like essentially, I don't want to say baked in, but they're just, got it. They're so a part does. of it. Because I think big knee pads, you could add that to the singlet for the look. I know. I was going to say, I like where we're going we here. wear knee pads too? I'm I think about Definitely. It. Uh, knee mean, pads, the headgear. I, the one thing is the shoes. That really is going to make the price tag on this go way up. The uh, wrestling shoes. We're talking about the bet uh, EJ and I have to pay off at WrestleMania and now mm. at the office, which is wearing matching singlets. I don't think you have to wear the shoes. I think we can vote on that. Th- that doesn't matter. I mean, the, the bet was the, yeah, the shoes. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that's wrestling seems cool. shoes. Wait a, minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. They're like 150 bucks. Yeah, easy, Pete. Wait, I, wait I wouldn't require you to wear I want boots. them in orange wrestling shoes. <laughs> To go along with this wrestling outfit, this is the whole but gimmick. It was no, it wasn't a wrestling outfit bet. It was a wrestling singlet bet. That's true. Oh, yeah, come on. We're adding the headgear. Just I think the singlet might be embarrassing. With the, uh, uh, attire? <laughs> I mean, come on. But the singlet's embarrassing enough. I think we've hit the embarrassment quotient. I don't know that the boots add enough. And you got to wear the headgear. The yeah. headgear will. I mean, okay. They, they might that. need the headgear because they're going to get their butts kicked in the parking lot. <laughs> actually, <laughs> <laughs> people are going to challenge random Philadelphians. I was actually kind of hoping just to keep my ears warm because it's going to be pretty cold. For these yeah. singlets. I, I, th- I think them sitting there with singlets and, and headgear will stand out at Mania. I mean, I freaking I, I hope agree. so. I, <laughs> I totally hope agree. so. Yeah. If we're doing all this for nothing, oh boy. Uh, 855 <laughs> Nobody notices. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, eh. Hey guys, look at me in a singlet. Uh-huh. <laughs> 855 212 for CBS. Uh, coming up, Aaron Rodgers is back on a podcast, but not one you may have thought. We'll get to that next. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining.
One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. I'm still laughing at this idea of Maggie Gray and EJ Stewart in the break room wearing a singlet on a Thursday morning. Just uh, It reminds me of this is SportsCenter ads. Uh, just to try and play it off casual, Maggie. That's the key. But uh, <laughs> uh, we're really looking forward to it. April 6th, Maggie and EJ will be at WrestleMania wearing singlets and somewhere you'll be in the with crowd. Us. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. I have to decide what I'm wearing. We, but you guys aren't going to get in the ring. Like, we're not going to see any kind of situation here. Are we any Pat McAfee jumping off the top rope? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I cannot disclose anything. All I can tell you is that the WWE has been very accommodating. Okay. Oh, leave it at that. is that a tease? Andrew is in San Diego calling us. Andrew, you have a thought on the singlets that EJ and I should be wearing to pay off this bet in April. Yeah. How's it going, guys? First time caller. Thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it. What's up? Uh, so, yeah, no, I was an independent wrestler back in New Jersey for the past 20 years. I just had my 20th anniversary uh, back in December. And so I got a little take on the wrestling stuff. This is sure. amazing. Good. Hit us with your expertise. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was like, I think it's really awesome. First of all, that you got are in, um, guys are going to WrestleMania in the first place. It's such an awesome time. I don't know if you've been to any WWE events, but I went to WrestleMania last year in SoFi, and it really is something incredible. You guys are going to have a great time. Awesome. So what's your like advice for us as a former independent wrestler for what we should do with these singlets? So or current independent is, wrestler, I'm sorry. So, yeah, the, the, sing, the singlet is a good start for sure. But you guys really need to find up like a character, find some sort of gimmick and really do it up. Like maybe dress up as like pirates or like <laughs> clowns on top of it, some kind of wrestling character uh -huh. you know something that's gonna really pop out and you know it's supposed <laughs> to be embarrassing so really lay into it <laughs> pirates or clowns on top of the singlet how about embarrassed radio hosts would that is that's not gonna cut it for a yeah, character no. okay got it i mean if you're if you're really gonna do it i you go go all in really get in there all right well know? if we're doing really this ej i call pirate no, no, <laughs> i'm not see, doing andrew, clown but we andrew. Are being a wrestling character that's the point well, I think no, the I thing think is, I don't think Andrew knows what we're built like here. Uh, I think just <laughs> the less that we can cover up our bodies with, the more embarrassing it will be. So I think a clown could actually help you. No, well, I mean, I could wear an eye patch and like a pirate's hat. That was a, my kid's Halloween costume last year. Maybe I could steal some of his old stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think if I were you guys, I would put on as many clothes as anything to put on more clothes. <laughs> because I think the closer they are to a high school wrestler, the more embarrassing it will be, I, I Andrew. Th I think uh, the caller has uh, picked on a great, Thing to do, and I think one of us should should figure out what gimmick EJ and Maggie will be. Oh man, Andrew! Now you're giving us something to think about. Uh, hey, wow! Like, Thank you for like the phone call. Wrestling world, a singlet's not enough these days. You got to really stand out. Unless you're an <sighs> Olympic gold medalist like Kurt Angle, you got to find that little extra niche to give you guys, you know, make some pop out, make you really get noticed. Hey, so Andrew, what something. what was your character? Um. 
So I did um, like a Game of Thrones kind of style thing where I was, you know, considered myself the most important man in wrestling history. And I had they would come out to the ring with like this long cloak. And I would tell people that, like, before every match, I would come in and tell them, like, I won't beat them up if, as long as they bend the knee. And that was a cool <laughs> thing I did for a couple wow. of years. Yes. Andrew, thank you. That's awesome. And, like, topical. Yeah. <laughs> Thrones is one of the most popular shows in, in this country. I, I'm nervous to say this because I'm sure Andrew could beat me up very easily, but that's a bit nerdy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, love that. I love that gimmick. Bend the knee. Bend the uh, knee or you get... You're behind kick. Uh, we bend mm. the knee to Andrew Bogish, who's here with headlines. Good morning. Uh, good morning again, guys. Two nights ago, the Warriors were smoking the Bucks, celebrating a return to full health. And now this has happened. Raymond, that split action again. Curry. Kick out Moody. Catch and shoot three. That is back out, and Kobe White's got it. Excuse me. That will be the foul in the backcourt. And now Steph in a little distress. You can actually hear Steph Curry yelling early in that clip from NBC Sports Bay Area, twisting his right ankle on a drive to the rim. Steve Kerr asked for an update post game. I don't know yet. Point. Yeah, he's uh, he's got his foot in a bucket of ice right now. Uh, I haven't talked to the training staff yet. Curry has only missed three games so far this year. He left with 3:51 to go. DeMar DeRozan had the go-ahead three-point play with 26 seconds left. Third straight win for him and the Bulls, 125-122 in San Francisco. They're still hanging at ninth in the East, two and a half games behind the Pacers. The Warriors, for now, win a virtual tie with the Lakers for ninth in the West. The Kings outscored the Spurs, 131-129, because Victor Webanyama didn't mm. play thanks to a sprained ankle. You always ask how bad they would be if he wasn't there. They're now 0-7 when Wemby doesn't play this year. So they'd be winless if they didn't have him. Okay, mm. so now here becomes a question. We got to do oh, a little yeah. math here, which I don't love doing on the air. So Wemby's played 56 games. Can someone get a piece of paper and a pen out on this one? Pete? Perloff, Dartmouth, can I get someone else to do the math Wait, on How this? many games did you say? He's played 56 games. Okay. There's 82 in a season. And they have 20 left. And there's going to be a temptation to shut him down. Right. So he needs, what I'm getting at is he needs 65 games played to even qualify for rookie He's of the year. He's getting that easy. Well, what if they decide to shut him down in the last couple of weeks for, uh, say, I the mean, ankle gets a little there's worse? There's 20 games left. He's played 56. He's got nine more games. It's fine. I know, but what if the ankle's bad? Yeah. Like, why if he comes you have back 14 and. 14 wins that you might be conservative. I, I don't I'm th- telling I don't, you, I don't it, think it got problem. put on my radar when they said he's not going to be playing for the rest of the road trip. They looked at their schedule. I was like, oh, that's one more game. <laughs> but they also get kicked out of their own arena for the Final Four. They have a couple games at a neutral site coming up. I don't know. I don't know what any of this means, but I really hope that Wemby gets the 65 games because if somehow this bet becomes null and void because Wemby twisted an ankle, it will be the all-time, like, wet fart ending to this awesome <laughs> bet that you would have to pay off for off of driving to San Antonio. Wow. Well, I'm not sure. A wet fart is actually kind of exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I think Especially a fart singles. in the wind is more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the rules are the rules. It, it's not null and void. I actually won the bet. He was not rookie of the year. Therefore, when Bastiama. Oh, no. that That's not how it goes. I, it, I think he might be kind of right, though. He would win. <laughs> I would win. <laughs> I would no, admit that. He's a bust. It just means he right. lost on a technicality. Right. Is, is the thing. You, you'd be wrong about when Bastiama. And, Maggie, leave your tarot card influence elsewhere. He's going to be fine. Okay. He's going to play nine more games in a month. It's going to happen. Yeah. And I've thought about calling, uh, what was her name? Andrew? Andrew. Andrew. I've thought about calling her like five times since she came in on Friday. Like a week from yesterday. A week from today. I've thought, I've had a million things come up. I'm like, I should call the tarot card reader on this one. You mean, that's that? as, as was Angela, I believe. So. Angela, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That brilliant analysis that the Bills were not going to win a Super Bowl in five years. Yeah, you like, you needed more. tarot card yeah. experience to <laughs> tell me that. Someone's got to tell me the oh, truth. Oh, you want more punishment? Like, what are you, yeah. what are you going back for? I just, just, I need to know. Who Why is the you... dark-haired woman? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> they haven't won it in 55 years, so it's an easy call to say they're not going to win in the next five. Any more headlines, Bob? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, the Nuggets took care of the Celtics in Denver last night, 115-109. Nikola Jokic had 32 points, a dozen rebounds, and 11 assists. And the T-Wolves got a 113-111 win in Indy, thanks to Anthony Edwards. 44 points 
and a ridiculous game-ending block. The bad news for many, Carl Anthony Towns and his left knee reportedly headed for surgery, but this apparently is the quickest way to get back on the court. Cat will be reevaluated four weeks from now. I wonder why we're discussing Miami football. Hurricanes legend Ja'Cory Harris on the Momentum podcast throwing shade at current Florida QB Graham Mertz. The quarterback there now, you got Tim Tebow jersey, jersey on. Uh, you can't do that. You can't. Yeah. And then I meet you at Prime 112. Uh, Brandon Spikes introduced me to him. And um, talking to the kid, I'm like, hey, you ready? And the kid going to talk about how can I be ready for a team that was sorry last year? Like, whoa. Like, he's talking trash. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Okay. All right. Wait, you, but was, Miami was better than Florida yeah, last say, year. I don't what understand. What was their record? I, look, I have no idea. EJ, you want this one? How dare Grant Mertz, first of all? Okay. Like, they won, what, six games? Five games? I don't know if they made a bowl game. And you're going on and, you, and you're, at a, you're, in, you're in our city. And a great former Miami quarterback comes and say, hey, just what's up? And you're like, oh, well, your team was sorry last year. Like, I'm sorry, Miami was better than Florida last year. What What's going on? We'll see you on, a, on August 31st, okay, Graham Mertz? We'll see you on August 31st. <laughs> I guess, like, does the trash talk get a little muted because they're st- prime 112? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's NIL. That's the new NIL yeah. normal now. He can afford steaks at prime 112. <laughs> it's like, and we're all at the fanciest restaurant in Miami. Oh, you. I don't know. Seems a little high flown. A uh, quick NFL note. The Chiefs are re-signing linebacker Drew Tranquil. Three years, 13 mil guaranteed. And the Dolphins adding veteran tight end Janu Smith. And now back to you guys. Bogus, thank you so much. The comp for J.J. McCarthy in the NFL. Who is it? Lance Zierling, uh, Zierling, pardon me. NFL draft analyst for NFL.com is one of the absolute best at this. The comp king. He will join us next. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two 
two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. Oh boy, it's March, and that means it is draft season in full effect. And one of our favorite draft analysts, of course, is Lance Zierlein, NFL.com, Houston Sports Radio legend. I would say legend now. Uh, but Lance does the tape work, Maggie, watches all these guys. Lance, how you doing? Have you emerged from your cave at all? Or are you just sitting there watching <laughs> film all day, every day? Well, I'm actually watching a Kansas safety right now before my radio show. So <laughs> I knew you were. The I've party actually never stops. I've been in the closet in Houston, and it's a lot more depressing <laughs> than it sounds. But you do do the work. So you had a mock draft the other day. The first mm-hmm. thing that stood out to me is JJ McCarthy, Michigan quarterback, number nine to the Broncos. How, what's the ceiling for how high this guy can go right now? There's so much buzz about him. Uh, man, it's just so hard to tell because <clears throat> you know the. I think that it really depends on what people think of Drake May. Um, It's tough. Drake May has all these traits, but the tape's just not that great this year. I mean, there's just really no way around it if you've actually put the time in and watched. I I know that there was just an assumption it was Caleb Williams 1, Drake May 2, and then you move on from there. And I I immediately had it Caleb 1 and Jaden Daniels 2. And I got a lot of pushback early on in January when I put that out there on social media. And now people are... Or, you know, because they're used to that narrative that's been there for so long. Well, now I'm wondering, is there a chance that, you know, that, that, that a team would would go with some of the, you know, some of kind of the intangibles that J.J. McCarthy has over the traits in, in the uneven film? And if that's the case, then I think the highest J.J. McCarthy could go would be three, honestly, <laughs> which would be, you know, the third quarterback spot, whether it's whether it's the Patriots taking it or if they move out of that. That would be the highest. I think more than likely, though, five or six. I say five because uh, it's a trade-ahead spot of the Giants, who also may be in need of a quarterback, obviously. Uh, The Chargers could trade out of that spot to five. So I think five or six is more legitimate in terms of the the highest, uh, the earliest you could see him. And then, um, you know, rumor has it that Kirk Cousins, a lot of people believe Kirk Cousins will be in Atlanta, which would take them off the market. And and I think the latest he goes though would be twelve to Denver. I think that's I think Denver's twelve. That'd be the latest I could see him going is, is pick number twelve. Um, if they sat where they are and they didn't try to trade up, that's so. I think you're looking really realistically somewhere between five from a trade up standpoint all the way to twelve. What's the comp for JJ McCarthy, Lance? It's tough. Um, you know, there are times where he looks like uh, 
you know, Alex Smith. I think I, I think Alex Smith is actually a pretty decent comp. Um, it's hard to tell because he's had two years in a pro style offense. These other guys are in more prolific offenses. He's not asked to make those same kind of throws. When I say asked to, he doesn't get to make the same kind of touchdown throws, the the one-on-ones down the sideline. That's not really how their offense is, is built. So it's tougher to tell he's got the mobility. I don't think Alex Smith is a bad comp, but I think that he's more willing to push the ball down the field than Alex Smith was. Okay, so the next tier of quarterbacks uh, has been generally considered Bo Nix and Michael Penix, maybe first-rounders, maybe second-rounders. Right. Do you hold their age against them? Because I'm hearing a lot of that. They're both 23, been around a long time. And I hear the argument, oh, at 21, they were not very good. But how do NFL teams view that issue? Well, for one, Michael Penix is going to be 25 when the season starts. So he's actually older than you think, I believe. I think um, I think he's going to be 24, actually. What's that? I, I just looked that up. I think he's going to be 24. He was he gonna born be 24? In, he's going to be okay. 24 in May. Because this is year six. This is year six for him. He's had four season-ending injuries in Indianapolis, he had, or in Indiana. He had two seasons where he was not injured in Washington. So he played six years of college football. Bo Nix played five, three at Auburn, two at Oregon. It's kind of funny because their career paths are, are fairly similar. Penix had some flashes at, at Indiana, but was mostly disappointing because of the injuries. Uh, Bo Nix was came in, heralded at Auburn, and, you know, it just kind of never really clicked for him at Auburn. It wasn't great around him. But both of them reinvented themselves at Washington and Oregon, respectfully, uh, respectively, rather, uh, in, in the Pac-12. And and I think right now teams for a quarterback, we look at the ages of quarterbacks, honestly, they don't really care that much about that age. I think the thing that's the advantage is you really have a better feel for Jaden Daniels, uh, Penix, and and uh, um, obviously Bo Nix, because these guys have started five or more years you know, it's the rare player, rare quarterback that have all started five or more years, and all three of them have started for different teams. So you've had a chance to really go through. They kind of know what it looks like. You Your progression where you have J.J. McCarthy's only played two years, and you're not really sure who you have right there. The same thing could have been said with Justin Fields, with Dwayne Haskins, guys who didn't play a lot of football. You look at the guys you're talking about, Andrew, you know who they are off the mm-hmm. tape. You know what they can do and you know what they can't do. So the age is less important because a lot of times you – you know, the concern is well, we got to find out who this guy is. Well, you kind of know who they are, and you know what they're good at and what they're not good at. You have so much tape. And, and quarterbacks last longer. Quarterbacks tend to play longer. So their age is not a factor. Getting to the age of 34, 35 is not unusual if you're a good quarterback. So if you tell me a guy can play 10 years in the league, I immediately don't have issues. Lance Zierlein joining us, NFL Draft Analyst for NFL.com. Watches the tape, knows his stuff. And and Lance, you know, you mentioned Drake May and the tape wasn't great last year and there's just no way around it, right? And he was a two-year starter at Carolina. Right. You have him going number three overall to the Patriots. How much risk would the Patriots be taking if they took Drake May that high considering the tape wasn't good last year? Well, I think substantial. I mean, my grade for him was a 6.5 on our grading scale, which is a clear boomer bust grade. Um, I've given Zach Wilson had that grade, 6.5. It didn't turn out great for him. Um, I, you know, it's one of those grades where you see the high-end stuff. And for me, I wasn't all in on Zach Wilson like a lot of people. I, I really had some concerns. It was less about his tape, but more about the ability to, to translate to the next level. With Drake May, he throws the ball 100 miles an hour no matter where you are on the field. You can be four yards away from him or 40, and you're going to get the same gas. Uh, he's not as act- uh, he's not as accurate with ball placement on crossing routes and intermediate throws, which is a concern. You want to have a baseline of accuracy, and so when you look at what he does, you know what he would do for the Patriots. Everyone has this idea that well, maybe he's Josh Allen. Well, maybe, but maybe Josh Al- Allen is a unicorn, mm. and you're going to be chasing a ghost trying to find the next Josh Allen. And so I think if you're the Patriots and you say, yeah, look, here's I can tell you this, Maggie, I wouldn't do it. I've already, I'm already on the record saying I would take Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors I would, or I would trade out. I would not take uh, Drake May third. I just think there's, for a team like the Patriots specifically, now there's other teams I would say, yes, I'll take Drake May. But for the Patriots, where there's a good chance the fans will be clamoring for him to play right away, that's not a good spot. I think Drake May needs to be in a place where he can sit and watch, take mental reps, <clears throat> and mature as a football quarterback. Um, and, and three is not that spot. Three is not really that spot, although I do think Elliot Wolf 
is and, and Gerard Mayo are going to be much more patient than than some people think. I think Elliot understands, man, this is a process. Bill Belichick left it left it a wreck in terms of the personnel and the and, and the roster. But I think it's a big I think it'd be a big risk to take Drake May in the top three. Talking to Lance here, line NFL.com. Now, Lance, you do a character SEC man on your radio show. I don't know if you still do it. It's hysterical. <laughs> I have the entire Tennessee Vol Nation after me right now. Is that the whiniest fan base in oh, all of America's it. sports? Oh, no, no, no. West Virginia is really bad. And oh. it's Ohio State's bad, and they're, I feel like they're dangerous, too. Um, Ohio State doesn't, they're really unhappy with me because I have Malik Neighbors ahead of. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. We're coming up against a break. Explain that one, Lance. My mock draft. They, why? They why so neighbors? Mad. Why do I have them ahead? Yeah. What, what's that about? Well, so I have them both as a six eight rating, which is really high. Uh, I have them as Malik Neighbors a six eight six, and I have you know Marvin Harrison Jr. a six eight three. So they're basically the same grade. There's really no difference. The fact that anyone could encroach upon Marvin Harrison Jr. drives Ohio State fans crazy. But the reason is pretty simple. Um, he's got good size. Malik Neighbors has good size. He has elite separation talent. I mean, his acceleration is phenomenal. His top end speed, his acceleration, his ability to decelerate and accelerate. I looked at some sports science numbers from a from a guy in the SEC who has his own computer vision who gave me the numbers from a scouting standpoint of opponents, and it was the numbers are staggering. And he can make contested catches. He can work all three levels of the field. Now, you can say similar things about Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't. I think the one separator is the elite speed. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be more of a, a 4.47 guy, 4.49 guy. Um, he's not going to run, so we'll never know. He can say he'd run whatever. We can hear about you know, his, his MPH numbers uh, based, on, based on catapult or whatever people want to tell you. But I think on tape, you can clearly see that the guy with the most explosive speed. So the only real differentiator for me is I think that uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is more polished and is maybe the safer pick. But I think the higher ceiling, and I'm going to project to the higher ceiling, is Malik Neighbors. But, but yep. I mean, oh. by just a minuscule amount. Really, I have these two guys neck and neck. Lance, you're the best. Lance Zierlein, NFL Draft Analyst for NFL.com. Got to go do his own radio show in Houston yeah. right now. Lance, you're the man. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll check in with you again soon. Coming up. It was a story that came across yesterday. At first glance, we thought it might have been a joke. Turns out, oh, it's it's real, baby. We'll get to that next. Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. Uh, Here we go. This is Maggie Gray with an Odyssey Sports Minute sponsored by LL Flooring. LL Flooring, every step covered.
30 seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. a violin prodigy. Her full name is Maggie the Stallion. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Well, it sounded like a joke yesterday when the news came across that Jake Paul would be fighting Mike Tyson Perloff. Welcome to the show, by the way, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. But no, it is all too real. This is happening in July. Where else? Jerry World. And it's fascinating, I guess, to a certain degree, but you guys got on me because this happened and I said, oh, Jake Paul's going to win this fight. And the backlash was immediate and it was swift because you guys like, how dare you, Mike Tyson? Yeah. And I was alive for the Mike Tyson peak also. I get how much of a cultural phenomenon he was. Uh, super polarizing, by the way. I mean, Mike's comeback in terms of his reputation has been something almost unprecedented considering he did go to jail and was convicted of rape. The fact that he has come back to be like a darling in our society is is crazy. We have... Um, we have gone through so many peaks and valleys with Mike Tyson as a famous person, but as a boxer, Perloff, I get what he was. He's not that now, guys. He's 57 years old. He's a, a former fighter. I mean, guys who are these, it's very rare that fighters age well, considering how brutal the profession is. And he's feeling the effects, I think, of his career. Why would anyone think he could get into the ring with a 27-year-old and win? All we need is one shot, Maggie. All we need <laughs> is one right hand. And yes, the footage of Mike Tyson walking with a cane that was all over the internet yesterday made me a little nervous. Not going to lie. Oh, It should. <laughs> this is called wishful thinking. I think everybody in America is going to rally behind Mike Tyson to knock out Jake Paul. And I don't even hate Jake Paul. I just think that everyone would love to see that, right? I mean, is there anybody, even if, forget the analysis, you're acting like it's a real boxing match. Don't you want to see Mike Tyson knock out Jake Paul? Is this, isn't this, everybody here is all for that, I assume. Well, it's funny because, yes, in this world right now, Jake Paul is actually the villain. He's the heel. He's the problem child. He's the agitator. He's the gate crasher, uh, the YouTube joke who's now boxing. I, I think he's kind of shed a little bit of that, but he's like the bad guy, which is crazy because Mike Tyson was the bad guy for his whole career. And it was, or for most of it, it was the bad guy. Oh, no, no, no. You think he was a no, bad guy? People loved him, but he was the intimidator. He okay. was the intimidating and punishing style. Right, uh, right, right. And right. then things got, you know, in his real life got spirally and spiraled. And I already mentioned his going to jail, but also, you know, I'm going to eat your kids. The, you know, he's literally ate the ear off another man. <laughs> well, the Vander Holyfield bite, yeah. which, you know, the thing about the bite is that's just really poor sportsmanship. And Mike has admitted to that. Like, it's such a, it's not just so weird, and uh, but it's it's also such against the un, the actual rules and the unwritten rules of sportsmanship that you would do that. The headbutting is one part. The biting of somebody's ear, he said, was basically he was not in shape to fight Evander Holyfield and was looking for an exit and couldn't do it gracefully, wasn't going to train hard enough to beat Holyfield, and he looked for the easy way and cop out, and that's why he bit the ear. That's all stuff he said, by the way. That's not me. Yeah. We were all, yeah, we right. all saw that. It was great. Right. So I just, first of all, <laughs> great is one way to put it. I don't think that he's going to take this seriously, number one, with Tyson. Um, and I, I, I think it's going to be something we're going to turn into. And, and after we're done watching it, going to feel a little bit of like an ick, but we will have probably been entertained. I, yes, I'll go ahead, bro. Yeah. No, I just think that Tyson is now, he's become a good guy later in his career. Yeah. He had that. He was in The Hangover, and it kind of changed his career. Then he did a play with Spike Lee on Broadway. A one-man show. Yeah, a he's a hit. He's, he's a redemption story, yeah. a full redemption story. So all that, all the really terrible things 
that he did early, I think that it's a second chance in America. So I think he's very, very well liked right now. Sorry, EJ. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I definitely would, would co sign that. It is crazy considering what Tyson was in the mid to late 90s. Yes. All the yeah, trouble, no, he's the good the guy in this that, fight. Yeah, that he <laughs> no put doubt. himself in. Yeah. Um, but I, I, here's what I'll say as much as him walking with a cane may be a little concerning. You want to go through YouTube rabbit holes? No, Maggie was on the space rabbit hole that I took her through. <laughs> yeah. Go through a Is YouTube rabbit hole of Mike Tyson training as a boxer in his 50s, and you'll see really quickly why people feel like Jay Paul is going to get knocked out. Okay, yes, the footage is very impressive of him sparring in a ring, but he's not even sparring, actually. He's just doing, doing combinations mit, doing on work, the mitt. Yeah. Right. That's not... He will look good doing that until he's 100. This is That is a muscle memory that he is so the the equation was always for every second you spend in a boxing ring it's an hour in the gym so think about that every second you're in the ring is an hour in the gym considering how much training he's had in his career that muscle memory of that mitt work again he'll look like that until he's 100 Steph Curry will be able to hit a 3 until he's 100 that type of muscle memory is not going to leave you what's going to leave you is moving your feet when someone else is throwing punches at you. Do you see what he was moving, though? It wasn't even just the punches. I mean, the way he was weaving in and out. I mean, it looked like a, it looked like a, you know, like a, like a caged bear that came out and was ready to <laughs> attack people. It, it is frightening. EJ, this footage is 20 seconds. It's not. Oh, but there's other videos. There's other 20-second yeah. videos. I know, but they're all 20. But still, those 20-second <laughs> videos are some of the most entertaining stuff you'll see on the internet. And I've, I've watched Jake Paul fight. Now, to be fair, he is fighting people, not doing mitt work. Against a guy in a in a big you know whatever that thing is they wear on their on their stomach like big basically heavy bag right but still like I, I've seen him fight and yeah. like he beats guys who don't box like that's the that's the big thing is Mike Tyson the thing I'm worried about is me as a boxing fan like there's actually pressure on Mike Tyson now like that's the only thing I'm worried no. about there yeah is? there is because like he did beat Roy Jones Jr. Two years ago, right, and and like Roy so, did not show up for that. And Roy was scared to death, which makes me think, okay, if Roy Jones was scared to even engage with Tyson, maybe there is something that Mike Tyson be able to box this age. But like, if he somehow loses, or dare I say, Mike Tyson gets knocked out by Jake Paul, that would be one of the biggest stains on the sport of boxing that maybe it could have, which is crazy considering okay. it's boxing. So here, yes, boxing. As literal corruption. There, there's no rock bottom when it comes to boxing and, like, the circus atmosphere of it, how corrupt it yeah. is in terms of, like, the promoters and, and what fights they make and, and all that stuff. Like, we uh, we have no faith left in boxing, and that's the, that's the fault of the sport, not the boxers. Uh, a little bit. But here's the thing. It's not going to be a stain. It's going to only be a stain, EJ, to your childhood or your memory of Tyson. That's it, of him as a fighter. To actually say it's going to stain boxing, yo, it's a YouTube guy who turned boxer. Like, we're already in a totally different realm. He's not boxing a kangaroo, but, like, we might. No, no, <laughs> we're not that far away. And so the only stain it's going to be on people's memories is the, I, the thought they have of Tyson being that guy of our childhood or of your young adulthood or whatever. But Jake Paul is a boxer now. I mean, I don't think he's no longer like some guy who doesn't box. Right, I but think it's not he like boxes a lot more than Mike Tyson. But that's he's not for... fighting, fighting Tyson Fury. You yeah, know? but I feel like I don't... Tyson Fury is the best guy he fought probably, yeah. which is crazy. No, no, uh, no the, uh, Tyson Fury, the actual right. guy. Oh, right, right. Not yeah, Tyler. Yeah, Ty, yeah, whatever the brother's no, name. Tyson Tommy Fury. Fury. Yeah, Tommy, Fury. Yeah. Tommy Tyson Beater. is the actual guy. But I think Jake right. Paul... Uh, I do disagree a little bit. He's not just a uh, phenomenon. He has actually become kind of a real boxer. As, as, don't we all Yeah, but he that? doesn't have... If you're actually talking about a true boxing career, he doesn't have the amount of fights that someone would right. have in their career to warrant... Like the attention that he gets. Like I think, of course, like, not, Jake right. Paul would like crush probably anybody in this building in a boxing match. Like well, he clearly this building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, we could bring someone off the street no, but, would have a good shot. No, but to Paul's point, like, yeah, uh, he's not a joke. Like he knows how to box. Yeah, for sure. which was unfortunate for Tyson. Right. <laughs> that's but, why. But it's that's why the odds are so, so heavily. Is that like anybody, any YouTuber can become a, a, a above average boxer and he could knock out Mike Tyson? Like that would be terrible. And, and Maggie, you are right to the point where yes, it would be a steam because I think everyone, even to this day, is still. Definitely afraid of Mike Tyson. And there's a like, fascination still with Tyson, too. For sure. But some of yeah. that fascination is that if you ever step to Mike Tyson right. and you got on his bad side, that there'd be a problem. There's the baddest man on the planet still aura around right. Mike Tyson. Like he, just, he just has... He's this like would the, pierce that. He's like the Undertaker. It doesn't matter right. how old he gets. He's always going to be Mike Tyson. So if he gets knocked out by Jake Paul, a guy who people think should, would get knocked out by real boxers, right. that would do a lot of damage. See, I totally disagree. Yeah, I, I think it'd be... 
I, the dude's walking with a cane. He's 57. He's going to be 58 for the fight, right? Yeah. I don't think this dam- really damages fighting. I think that Tyson is, <laughs> old Tyson's in a different category all to himself. No, I think he sees a moment where he sees a payday. And I'd, of course. Be, I'd be surprised if he takes this seriously. And I don't think he cares if he gets knocked out. I Well, I, I you know, it's funny. I'll bet you it goes a distance because is Jake Paul really knocked out a lot of these guys? I know he's, or has, maybe he has. Did he I mean, knock he out, out the Nate last Richardson? guy? The guy he just fought on what last weekend? He knocked out that guy in like the first round. How, who? Well, he fought Nate Robinson, he the former Nate I mean, Robinson. Did into, he knock into, him? Out? And he knocked him to Mars. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so maybe he is a knockout guy. Ooh, that that's different. I assume Tyson was just going to sort of stay there, take a lot of punches, and lose a decision. Know, guys, Nate Robinson is not a boxer. That's, Nate, oh, that's the I don't know about that. But. Okay. Well, <laughs> no. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, Nate Robinson's a boxer? Uh, no. Nate. Well, no. It's just like that's impressive to knock out Nate Robinson to me. That he's a pretty <laughs> tough dude. Yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> he's, maybe, he's a basketball player. In the dunk contest, maybe it'd be a little harder. But <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I see this differently. And the other thing about this, if heaven forbid you are thinking about betting on this fight, where Jake Paul is a heavy favorite now, I believe was it plus. You said 360 yesterday. Plus 360. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if the odds have changed at all, but plus 360. Um, no, I'm sorry. It would be minus, minus 360. 360. Yep. I said but minus 360. Yep. Like, I knew that didn't sound right. He minus 360 is a heavy favorite. You know, I would also be a little wary here about that. A little, I'd be a little concerned because when I watch Floyd Mayweather fight Logan Paul, it did seem like at times Floyd was kind of propping him up. Other th- other to keep the fight going because of the fans. The other part of this is I definitely watched Floyd Mayweather fight Conor McGregor, and I was at that fight. And I think that um, I don't know. I, it just seemed to me like Floyd was doing this with everything was super intentional about how oh, he yeah. fought that fight to the point where I would just say a little bit where. I mean, I think these. <laughs> I think. Some of these Paul brother fights have definitely been fixed. I'll say that. I don't like. They, I don't want to say fixed because I hate. It's. I have no proof. Yeah, no I proof. don't. I don't have proof either. I'm just. I mean, you know, Tyron Woodley puts his hands down and then just gets clocked right in the face. Like this guy, he's an MMA fighter. He knows to keep your hands up. I mean, some of these, some of these clips, you look and you're just like. I don't know. That looks a little fishy. Now, look, I mean, and then again, I've had the, the unfortunate pleasure of actually delving into this world every now and then. I mean, I'm watching him fight Tommy Fury, again, the guy that is Tyson yeah. Fury's brother who barely boxes. And I'm watching the announcers, you know, basically just go all over how Jake Paul is, like, destroying him. I'm like, are they watching the same fight? Like, clearly this is not what's happening. But, like, to me it was like, oh, this is like when the wrestling announcers got the wrong script, clearly, because they're, say- they're describing a fight that isn't oh. happening. <laughs> So I'm like, what's going happen? on? That's funny. So, um, like, so I mean, I so if I don't, I, I think what will happen if there's a real fight, I think Tyson knocks him out. If it's not a real fight, I think that this goes the distance and nobody gets hurt. I think this fight is all about the second fight, and that's oh, what the Tyron no, Woodley fight right was about. That. I'm sorry, and now I feel like I've kind of done this for a while, and I think I can see this stuff coming down the pike. And you know, this is also going to be the kind of thing we're talking about. Jake Paul is fighting Ty, uh, Mike Tyson. And coming up in July, this is also the kind of thing, Perloff, where, and I don't know about you, I'll be sitting on my couch mm-hmm. uh, Saturday night, what is this, July 20th, something like that? I'll be sitting on my couch, and it will be like 8 o'clock. I'll be like, I'm not ordering it. Well, it'll be like yeah. 8.30. Oh, it's on Netflix. Oh, Netflix. It's on Netflix. That's, that's that's right. the problem. Yeah. They're saying it's going to be the most watched boxing match in 40 years, probably, because it's free. Oh, yeah. No, I already have Netflix. Well, it's not free. It's on Netflix. You know, well, yeah, but I feel Netflix. like everyone has Netflix. That's true. So, sorry. If this was a pay-per-view, this would be me. 8 o'clock, not ordering it. 8.30, still yeah. not. 9, still not. Yeah. 9.30, uh, no. Starting to see things about the undercard on social media. 10 o'clock, it's like, oh, man. Do you see all the celebrities who are in the crowd? Da, da, da. By 11, 10.45, I'm hitting by. Always I think, happens. I think there's a case to be made that Mike Tyson might be the most fascinating and most entertaining athlete of the last 35, 40 years. Like, I think Tyson had his prime when he was knocking people out. And even the downfall was like, you couldn't yeah. keep your eyes off of it. The, I think the fact that you're saying that this is going to be the most, a pro saying this is going to be the most watched boxing match in 40 years for a guy who's 57 years old and is a podcaster now. Yeah. Like, shows that's also th- just his popularity. Right. Straight that's what up. I'm saying. Like, yeah. I think, I think that speaks to like, there are some names yeah. in our sports thing that just will always live forever. Yeah. And like, 
Tyson is one of them. Like, I, it's like I've heard the saying, like, if Michael Jordan is shooting jump shots out there in your in your uh, parking lot or Mike Tyson's fighting a guy, or which one are you going to run to? You're probably going to run to see Mike Tyson. Oh. It's, 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 it's his phenomenon. Is just, it still lives today. That being said, I had no interest in Roy Jones Jr. versus Mike Tyson. Yeah, I didn't either. Yeah, that one was, and actually the numbers were not that huge for that one. So this one's probably way bigger than that. Would you guys agree? This is a much bigger fight. It's a different audience. Yeah, and it was just so sad because I'm a huge Roy Jones Jr. fan from back in the day. The, say, the larger version of Roy Jones Jr. is not. <laughs> well, not, I mean, you can't expect him to be in the gym all the time now. <laughs> well, yeah, he's for, well, he actually, actually really fought into his 40s. Like, he yeah. never stopped. But was that was, was kind of sad broadcast. to watch him. Yeah. Kind of sad to watch him uh, at this stage. Anyway, regardless. So, but Jake Paul, it's not... I think here's a big question. Do we view this as a boxing match in the great tradition of boxing matches? Like, no one's going to say, Ali Frazier, too, <laughs> no, God, and no. Paul and Tyson. There's still that circus effect of this whole thing. Definitely. And, and I, by the way, you were at McGregor... Mayweather. Mayweather. Do you know that is the probably the one thing on social media I've gotten in the most trouble in my entire life? Why? Well, what'd you say? I said after the fight that, oh, that was a nice job by Conor McGregor to at least put on a show for the entire distance against Floyd Mayweather. And for some reason, it got aggregated that I think that uh, Conor McGregor should have won the fight or something. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, and wow. there was, I think, like uh, 27 million views and 400 million comments about how I was an idiot. You know what's so funny? So it was one of those things that in the arena – it felt very different than the backlash on social media. Because, yes, I remember coming back, and my co-host at the time was just like, I can't believe you wasted your time to go out there. It was such yeah. a joke. I'm like, you know, to be honest, it didn't feel like a joke. Uh, at the time, the energy in the arena was really good. And this is why I'll always say, if you ever have a chance to do one thing in your on your sports bucket list, I, I try to say this from a, you know, listen, if your team's on to the Super Bowl, don't do the Super Bowl. Don't, don't, you know, don't do the Final Four. Do a prize fight in Las Vegas. It's the type of energy in the room changes the uh, feeling. And so in the arena, your sentiment, if you had polled and did an exit poll with everyone who was in that arena when they left, if they were satisfied by what they just saw, I bet they would have said yes. And I'm talking about LeBron James was there. Bruce Willis was there. Aaron Paul was there. I mean, it was a, a every NBA player was there. It was crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, obviously Floyd Mayweather, how many knockouts does Floyd Mayweather even have in his he career? He doesn't, that's not his That's why, so like everyone's like, Saying it was, yeah, that was, we knew exactly what was going to happen in that fight. So I, I think that, that, that I fight, thought that McGregor did a nice job of at least playing boxer in the short term. Uh, did you feel that way? Uh, yeah. At one point, he like switched stances, which was kind of odd. He like, it was, it, but again, in the arena, it did feel much different. I get clowned to saying that to this day, but I, if anyone else was in there, I know it's a very small amount of people I'd be talking to, but if anyone else was in there, you know what I'm talking about. It did feel very big. Yeah, and that fight uh, ended in like a TKO, I think. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I watched it. It's, it was a good show. It's just the difference sometimes of watching stuff on TV versus being in the building. And listen, I, that's a I get it's a point of privilege where I get to say I was there covering it for Sports Illustrated. It was just very different. Um, but, but one thing, boxing though, you used to have real fights like Hagler Hearns, and yeah. you used to have you had to, it used to be for people who are young who don't know what bo boxing used to be the premier sport to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated every month. It'd be huge events that it, that might be lost forever. Now, the one fight that I was at that the I remember thinking to myself, do not forget this feeling. And it was the moment when Mayweather Pacquiao touched gloves in the middle of the ring. And the anticipation for this fight was so big. Tom Brady was there. I mean, everyone was at this fight. And I was there again for, for SI. And... That fight did not live up to the billing, and you did feel it in the arena. So well, yeah, I you mean, were feeling that as the fight was going on, like, oh, man, and Pacquiao turned out to be hurt and all that stuff, and, and you you felt like, oh, this is a bit of a letdown. Right, because they did it eight years too late. Of course, <laughs> yeah. but I'm telling you that moment of anticipation right when they touched gloves was something I've never felt before, and again, I've been very lucky to do 10 Super Bowls and three Final Fours, and it's that was very unique. And I love watching boxing. I watch boxing today. I've gotten back into it, I, I, and as much as I love it, I feel like the only way boxing could ever reach that kind of height, because I agree, the Pacquiao Mayweather buildup was huge, yeah. is if Jake Paul fights like a real, like, like Canelo. If he fights Canelo Alvarez. He's going to die. Right. <laughs> I know, kidding. which is, know, which is unfortunate, because like, that's probably the only thing that would actually raise to that level, because Canelo Alvarez is, by a lot of accounts, maybe the pound-for-pound -pound guy, and I think a lot of people know him. Of course, he has cross, uh, cross appeal with the Mexican crowd. If he fights a guy like Canelo Alvarez, who everyone thinks is maybe the best boxer in the world, and it's Jake Paul, a YouTuber, 
that is probably the only thing that gets to that point. Uh, the Tyson thing's going to be great, but that, it is going to feel more like a circus. Oh, it's a gimmick. Like, if they can do a non-circus fight to reach that level, it's probably mm. going to be something like that. But it's sad that you have to go to someone like Jake Paul, not an actual boxer. Whatever, talk about circus after they stole that fight away from Triple G, my guy against Canelo. Well, yeah, Canelo. you're totally I mean, right that. was that. ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, That's the problem with boxing. It's just so hard to believe it all the time. Yeah. 855-212-4CBS. Pete, you watching uh, Tyson, Jake Paul? Oh, yeah. I, wa- I watched uh, Mayweather uh, uh, McGregor, so I'll watch that. And it's on free TV. Uh, well, it's on fairly free TV. <laughs> yeah. It's on pretty much TV free TV. you've already paid for. Yeah, it's yes. some cost TV, so. Right. All right. Party of Pete's. Let's go Tyson. There you go. 855-212-4CBS. 855-212-4227. Okay. Big weekend. It's the Oscars. So we thought we'd give out a couple awards around here. We'll do that next. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining.
One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. The Oscars are Sunday night. Despite the year-by-year ratings drop in the Oscars, I am still a little bit into it because I've seen seven of ten movies now. I have a strong opinion on who should win the best picture. Wait, who's hosting? Is there any chance they're going to get right? slapped in the face? Oh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's Aaron Rodgers in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> that's a good funny. point. I think Kimmel's hosting. Uh, at least it, you could double-check me on that. Uh, and then, I'm um, spoiler alert, Oppenheimer is a gigantic Vegas favorite to win the Oscar. You didn't like it. I liked it. I thought it was good. But clearly, to me, Barbie is the, the movie of the year. I think that should be the Oscar. But, I mean, they don't like comedies. They don't like comedies. I still think it was by far the most inventive, funny movie of the year. It didn't and even it, get nominated for Best Picture, did it? Uh, I think it did. Oh, it did. Yeah. It just Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig nominated. didn't yeah. get nominated yeah. in their categories. Got it. Um, so anyway, I'm a, I'm a Barbie fan, which is kind of weird maybe. Uh, but anyway, we are going to do our own Oscars. Enough of these movies that probably a lot of people didn't watch except for Oppenheimer Barbie. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, Barbie is nominated. My bad. Yeah. Let's go through. If we were going to give Oscars to the sports world, a few categories. Uh, how many should we do, Maggie? What do we got? Well, EJ's got the categories. We'll give you the winners. We're not okay. going to go nominees on this one. We just go straight to who I would have winning and who you would have winning, Perloff. Okay, so let's begin with costume design. Best oh, that's costume where you design start. in sports. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you always start with the smaller ones. <laughs> All right, we've got to work our way exactly. up. Yeah, sure. I've watched the Oscars before. So who do you guys have? Let's start with Perloff first. Oh, well, that's obvious. Whose outfit? Now, I'm cheating. <laughs> I am cheating because this is supposed to be the year 2023. Right. Sure. I but think- I'm I'm kind of fudgy this. Who is most known in the sports world for what they wear right now? And it is obviously Jason Kelsey. He's either wearing that <laughs> mummer's outfit with the gigantic design, or he's purposely shirtless at a playoff game. This man really knows how to dress for the occasion. Shows up at his retirement press conference last week uh, sleeveless. Yeah. The dude is just a step above, and I think. You always talk about, well, hey, what's Jason Kelsey wearing? And that's what you need to have costume design. He wins the Oscar. You know, you even forgot the luchador mask that he was wearing after Travis won the Super Bowl. <laughs> 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 and he was walking around Vegas in the luchador mask with I, I, with a shirt, maybe no shirt. That I, was optional. Short, short optional. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even see <laughs> the luchador mask. So that's awesome. Yeah, uh, Jason Kelsey, costume design. Okay, for me, costume design, I'm going with a Lifetime Achievement Award, and that goes to LSU women's basketball coach Kim Mulkey. This one boutique, Ray, Rodeo Boutique, had a bunch of um, uh, jackets made by Queen of Sparkles, and they just <laughs> dropped them off at the house and said, hey, coach, we want you to wear these. And so I try them on, and I wear them. I can't imagine a full-grown adult, a woman of her stature, wearing something from a place called the House of Sparkles. <laughs> but that's what it looks like. <laughs> These Kim Mulkey jackets, even you know, men driving around, uh, most manly men. You guys know what I'm talking about with these Kim Mulkey jackets. They're out of control. Yeah. Sometimes she looks like a Muppet. Sometimes she looks like she's in a Vegas review. It's uh, chef's kiss. Yeah, for... and, her, and her staff is now dressing crazy, too. It's amazing. <laughs> they have, like, knights in the arena dressed like Kim Mulkey night. And everyone just wears a lot of sequins. So there let's, you go. Let's go to best screenplay. I know people think the NFL is scripted, but what is your best screenplay for the year in sports? For me, it's easy. It's the Michigan Wolverines. It's a very crafty play calls down here. And said they just handed this time to Cora. Steps back, breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Michigan. 
Their coach is suspended for six games this year. They are wrapped up in a crazy uh, sign-stealing scandal. Guys that, you know, we talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks, yet they persevere, they break through, they win the national title. And may I just point out this other moment where we are at the height of Jim Harbaugh, did he know, didn't he know, did he order the code red, how much blame should he get for the sign-stealing? He does a press conference, and this was the big takeaway. The respect that I have for chickens. I know there was there was a time when I said that chicken is a nervous bird. I don't eat chicken. I don't eat meat, you know, but uh, but I was dead wrong. I, I stand corrected. This dude is a treasure. I mean, even the best screenwriter couldn't come up with that. I'm actually going to go with an actual team of screenwriters. Why are we overlooking the NFL Taylor Swift fall 2023 is one of the greatest scripted events in sports <laughs> history. The fact that they were able, uh, actually, I don't know who wrote it. That's the thing. It's not quite clear. Did Taylor's people write this script or did the NFL's people or did they collaborate or was this some sort of giant corporate amalgamation that came up with this? Whatever it is, it worked times a thousand the Chiefs are now the highest rated games, challenging even the Cowboys. The Super Bowl had a record national 63 million, all because of this idea. Huh, why don't we hook up Taylor Swift with a football player? And Travis Kelsey was available. Brilliant planning. To actually have them win the Super Bowl is a little much for me, a little over the top, but that's what <laughs> wins in Hollywood. Bravo, NFL screenwriters, you've done it again. Well, there's some rabbit holes that would make you think. There were some other people behind it, but I don't ascribe to those kinds of things. Again, we are talking the people on the moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> politician. We are giving out Oscars oh, for the, the best. I forgot about the that. best <laughs> moments in sports. Go ahead, EJ. All right, so let's get to best director. I'll go to Maggie first on this one. Who do you got here, guys? We talk about this person all the time. Of course, he deserves the award. Best director so, to someone who's rewriting the script. And not even waiting for the filming to be over, he's rewriting the script before it's even performed. It's Doc Rivers. They shot 68% in that first quarter. What needs to change defensively? Well, listen, we're down eight. They've been off for 100 days <laughs> since their last game. They have a lot of energy. Uh, we will slow them down. Changing the narratives in a mid-game press com or a mid-game interview is an all-time directorial move. Again, he's rewriting the script before it's even performed. Bravo, Doc Rivers. You are the best director. I like it. I like it. I went with a more classic, the sort of remember the old school Hollywood director who would be yelling at everybody and super intense and wants more out of his actors. Who is that in the sports world? Who is the most intense coach there is? got to be Danny Hurley of UConn. <laughs> he is yelling and cursing and screaming. I think his actors are afraid of him, and it works. <laughs> he is the, it is, in a sports world where everything is getting softer. He's bringing back the Bobby Knight of it all. Danny Hurley, to me, he's a bit of a uh, he's a bit much for some people. Probably a bit of an egomaniac, but he, to me, he's an old school director and probably going to win two straight championships. So Danny Hurley for me. Big one to watch in March there. Okay, I'm going to go back to you, Pearl, off here. We're now down to the big two. Best actress. Who do you got? Meanwhile, we're doing our own Oscar nominations, by the way. Go ahead. So for actor and actress, I want to do people who actually showed acting skills. And who did the most notable impersonation of 2023? It's got to be LSU star Angel Reese, who impersonated Caitlin Clark <laughs> doing the John Cena celebration move. So Angel Reese showed, oh, you think you're so great. I can act like I'm Caitlin Clark. And it somehow just took over the sports world for a month. So Angel's Caitlin Clark impersonation was the acting job of the year for me. Oh, man. We're going to be in the same neighborhood here for Best Actress. For me, it's got to be the actual Caitlin Clark. I know it's supposed to be 2023, but I snuck into 2024 for this one. Because not only did Caitlin Clark, when she became the NCAA leader for points scored by a woman in NCAA history, she did it with this kind of flair. Here comes Clark. How will she go for history? There it is! The all-time leading scorer in women's college basketball. I mean, it was a 35-footer for the record. That is flair. That is understanding the moment. 
and she's not acting like it. She is about it. However, she broke Pete Maravich's record on free throws. So really anticlimactic. Mm. So if we're doing Hollywood here, you got to go with the 35 footer for the Love for the it. record. All right, last one here in our sports Oscars here on Maggie and Perloff. Maggie, yes, best actor. Oh man, it's so good, guys. It's right there. It was an all time performance. One that I couldn't even believe I was watching. Almost brought a tear to my eye. James Harden goes to China to call out Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey is a liar, <laughs> and I will never be a part of an organization with these words. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of anymore. The unsuspecting children at this basketball camp <laughs> said, jaws on the floor, if they even speak English there, jaws on the floor, just with a performance that, you know, it, it thrilled, it baffled, it, it was confusing, it was brilliant. Uh, all these things in one, just bravo, a full circle moment for James Harden talking his way off of his third team in two years. What an acting mm. job by Harden. All right, Pearl. <laughs> I'm getting to try to go, whoa. <laughs> uh, That's the one. Was, yeah. So once again, I took the job of acting a little more literal. Who is the best actor in the sports world right now? Who is a man of many faces? A man who might be wearing many hats on the sideline? Connor Stallions is clearly the best actor. <laughs> For years, he's probably been getting away with this. He pretended to be a Western Michigan assistant. Who knows? He could wear a costume, He'll put on a fake mustache. He is an actor's actor. He's like... <laughs> Uh, Paul Giamatti type. He can blend into any role. Yes, maybe he's not a superstar like Jim Harbaugh or James Harden, but I think the, he has shown the ability to be a thespian. <laughs> yes, he got caught, but you know what? Sometimes he, he was probably too good in his role and it helped Michigan too much. He's clearly the best actor in this sport by far. <laughs> I mean, the Daniel Day-Lewis of his generation. I mean, he, he might be in this room right now. We wouldn't even know it. The dude is such a good actor. <laughs> it's funny. He was doing all the videotaping with just a left foot. Uh, yeah. Wow. There's, there you go. No one in the audience knows my left foot, Maggie. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Oscar noms and winners for the Maggie and Perloff show. No? All right. <laughs> far back for I'm us. sorry. It's too early for Pete. Uh, no, I just think uh, that was a funny. What year do you think My Left Foot was? A oh, great, gosh. great movie. Really, really. He won an Oscar for it is the only reason why I even thought of it. Andrew Bogus. 1989. 89? <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. That's late considering some of the comedies we reference around here. And I'm just talking about Pete and myself. Uh, Bogish headlines? Hello. Hello. So EJ and I have been trying to get this in for days. We keep running out of time. We're doing it early. We're doing it first. Uh, everybody remembers Tyree Kill's house fire in Miami in January, right? Uh, did you remember, though, that Rick Ross lives across the street from Tyreek and live-streamed the fire? I had some wings stop wings on the way being delivered, but as y'all can see, he said it was a minor fire over at Miami Dolphins where I received a Tyree Hill crib that's right across the street from one of my cribs I ain't tripping as long as everybody's safe that's more important than my lemon pepper wings my ranch dressing and my roasted corn trust me where do you want to begin <laughs> now uh, I believe EJ, you can confirm Rick is an investor in Wingstop. He owns yeah, he Wingstop. Might, he's an, definitely an investor. He might even be a part owner at this point. Okay, so that's a paid ad for Wingstop Wings <laughs> while Tyree Kill's house is on fire. But I guess in there he does have priorities in order because he does say, hopefully everybody's safe. That's more important than my lemon pepper wings. Yeah, are we sure, though? Uh, yeah. Speaking I don't of the, know of good actors. I don't know if Rick Ross is one of them in that clip because I don't think the wings are less important than, <laughs> than whoever is safe. Because meanwhile, he didn't try to go over to the house and no. see if anyone needed his help. You'll be shocked to learn that Tyree Kill did not appreciate Rick Ross. Rick Ross, man, like you ain't even come over. You had the audacity to talk to a fireman instead of come take. You got my number, bro. You get on Twitter, post me all over Twitter, like after what me and my family went through. You supposed to be the neighbor, the neighborhood hero. Uh, now, <laughs> who thinks Rick Ross is the neighborhood hero, by the way? I don't know. I mean, he's, he's, that neighborhood. he's the king of Miami. I can, I can see that a little bit. Here's the funny part, though, is how Rick Ross said in that video, Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill. Like, 
That's He's a news reporter. A, it's a more formal <laughs> introduction than he gets at the freaking stadium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is where we enter Jags running back Fred Taylor into the store because he lives on this block as well. He saw the fire. He saw Ross's video. He didn't like it either. Finally, about two days ago, we got apologies from Rick Ross. Tyreek Hill, I wasn't picking on you, homie. I wasn't picking on you at all. First of all, I'm assuming you are all pro, wealthy, great homeowners insurance who going to go get new porcelain floors, marble walls, pillars. So it ain't nothing to pick on you about. More importantly, your beautiful mother and your family were straight. They were straight. I didn't film none of them, homie. And let's not act like I'm the one that premiered the fire to the world. It was five helicopters circling over your crib and my crib. You stay right across the street. This is my pillars. This is, <laughs> this is my favorite. Um, I was going to mention this on Wednesday when it was originally scripted. This is the new unbreakable record in sports. You'll never again have a house fire at an NFL player's house with a rap legend live streaming it. <laughs> On the same block as another NFL great and Fred Taylor chiming in. You, that's a combination you cannot repeat. New porcelain floors. <laughs> I love how it just ends up devolving. In, and this is just goes to show you get to a certain age in life, you're talking about all the same stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're talking, wherever you are, whether you're, you know, you're living in your suburb or in the city or whatever, you're just talking about your house, like homeowner stuff. Just marble walls. <laughs> Whether it's marble or formica, it doesn't matter. We're all having the same conversation. And I love how like Ross's apology was like, look, I apologize, but you got great home insurance. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. It's like, what kind of premium are you paying on that? <laughs> yeah, are we sure Tyreek owns the house? He might be renting. That's a that's a good point too. They have renters insurance. Well, don't forget though, it was their fault. So I don't know how insurance factors into that. Oh right, That's it true. was a it was a kid uh, playing, playing with, with a, lighter. Like a lighter or something. So I don't know if that how good that insurance is to cover mm. human error. You need the mayhem guy for that. I think so. You might need a Rick Ross loan. <laughs> you are all pro wealthy, great homeowners insurance. Mm. I can't imagine living in a house with a pillar in it. Pillars. <laughs> I can't imagine like what could really tie this room together pillars <laughs> that's what will tie it together pillars. And, yeah not a certain rug or an end table who gonna go get new porcelain floors marble walls yeah I mean there's a difference between pillars and pillars like I have a pillar in my basement for, for weight bearing yeah it's a, it's a load bearing yeah. pillar it's not made pillars. of $50,000 Italian marble is that called a true? pillar I mean, it's a circular thing yeah. from the okay. floor of the ceiling. Hmm. And it's not, I don't know what else you'd call it. I guess it's a, a pole somewhere <laughs> north of a pole. This thing, this whole conversation just made me want to like now visit the, this block. What a block. Like this block must block. have yeah. not only the coolest yeah. people, but the best houses apparently. Yeah, but in Miami, everything's got a gate. Hmm. You're not getting down that road. It's oh, a gatehouse. Man. I mean, maybe the, it's one of those where the guy just waves through everybody. But I doubt this it. guy have a certain look, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, I think you're good." Just goes through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm on my block. I'm the popular guy because the FedEx guy listens to WFAN. This block has Fred Taylor, <laughs> Tyreek Hill, and Rick, and probably other people we don't we haven't met yet. That's the thing. The Fred Taylor part, and I wish we did this earlier because I know there was so much sound from this back and forth. Fred Taylor was like, "Oh yeah, like I saw Rick Ross outside, like." Broadcasting this fire, right? And I said, Desperate wow, housewives, that's probably, that's probably like lurking in the in the bushes <laughs> and also sees. It's pretty awesome. Insurance. Uh, let's get back to sports. Last night in Denver, too much nuggets for the Celtics. Joker against Porzingis. Five on the shot clock. Joker for the win. Hook shot. Dunk. Alley oops Pillars. to Gordon. Denver leads it by four with 19 seconds to go. Timeout, Boston! Jason Kosminski on Nuggets Radio. The Jokic-Gordon connection put the finishing touches on a 115-109 win, sweeping the two-game season series. Gordon scored 16 on seven dunks. Jokic had 32 points, 12 rebounds, 11 assists. Steph Curry hurt his right ankle late in the Warriors. 125-122 home loss to the Bulls. And T-Wolves forward Carl Anthony Towns reportedly opting for left knee surgery in hopes of being back on the court early in the postseason.
He'll be reevaluated in four weeks. Guys, back to you. Barry, did you see my Pistons beat uh, your Nets We're last gonna night? We're going to get there. Okay, I just oh want to say that my Saving team wins again. the best again. for last. <laughs> By the way, uh, Cap is in the chat who mm. says that Tyreek Hill bought his mansion in Southwest Ranches in 2022 for a reported $6.9 million. Wow. I hope he got insurance. Might not matter, apparently, because if he started the fire. Oh, right, said, that's true. <laughs> hopefully the pil- hopefully the pillars made it out okay. <laughs> Have to replace the pillar. Oh, marble walls. Uh Bogus, thank you so much. Coming up, uh the Mahomes rules, quote unquote, that the Raiders are trying to, you know, put on Mahomes Pearl off, the physical play. Well, we've got that uh a little some clarification coming up with the Mahomes rules. Uh talking a lot of football next. Don't move, Maggie and Perloff. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining.
45 seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Great, Andrew Perloff. You know, it's funny. We talk about sports for a living, but we actually talk about it also like in our regular lives. And last night we're talking about the Las Vegas Raiders. And I didn't realize, Perloff, how maybe far apart you and I actually are on the Raiders. Yeah. Where I can actually maybe squint and see, depending on which quarterback they end up with this year, if if Antonio Pierce is telling the truth, that they don't want Band-Aids anymore and they want to just find a permanent solution. If you draft a quarterback, Mm -hmm. and if that quarterback shows some promise, I'm not saying year one they're going to be finished product, but I could see the Raiders finding their way back to relevancy very quickly, and you don't see it. No, what are you talking about? This is the Raiders, and I'm saying it not because of anything that's going to happen this offseason. Just the history. It's been, yes, they had a good year with Derek Carr when he went 13-3 and he got hurt, but... I think the ownership group, there's just certain franchises where the ownership group dooms a team. And I just cannot see them, especially in the AFC West, figuring this out. And I, I think it's just history is beating me down. And I, it's good for the NFL to have the Raiders good. But what have you seen in the last 20 years that makes you think they're going to turn this around? Okay, well, in the short term, they have decided they're taking a new approach to Patrick Mahomes. Now, to be fair, I think Max Crosby has always taken this approach. Mm-hmm. But Antonio Pierce called it the Mahomes rules, a play on the Jordan rules, which is uh, the Detroit Pistons being extra physical with Michael Jordan to try to get him off his game, get him in his head. Max Crosby on a podcast recently saying they aren't trying to injure Mahomes. They're just playing with ill intent. I'm on that energy every time. And I know my teammates are as well. It's not malicious or whatever. You know, people try to say we're trying to purposefully injure or whatever. It's a bunch of BS. You know, we're, we play the game the right way, but we play with ill intent and we play violent and, and fast. And uh, we plan on doing that for the years to come. Okay. More from Max Crosby. I'm sorry. This is not a podcast. This sounds like he's out at a camp or something. Okay. Uh, Crosby also responded to the backlash over Antonio Pierce's Mahomes rules comment. You know, people are sensitive these days, so, you know, it's what happens. People have their own thoughts and, you know, take things out of context. But, yeah, he's, he's I mean, he's multiple MVPs and Super Bowls. And at the end of the day, if we want to win, we got to take him down. So we're not shy about that. He knows every time I play him and every time I see him, I'm trying to ruin his day. So um, that goes for everybody. So, yeah, you know, people can take that whatever they want or whatever, but he knows I'm coming for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I – for Max Crosby, I think if they he he plays Mahomes hard and tough, and if they keep losing, he's not the one who gets the blame here. I mean, saying the Mahomes rules if uh, that they have Mahomes rules, if they keep losing to the Chiefs, Antonio Pierce is going to wear that, and whatever quarterback they have is going to wear that, right? Because that's generally who takes blame in these kind of situations. <laughs> Do you remember in the Netflix special yeah. when Max Crosby was talking all this trash and he got Mahomes mad and Mahomes yep. torched him right back? Uh, Mahomes is also complaints to the referees about him constantly. Y- yes, and they they then afterwards they say they have mutual respect for each other. Okay, Max Crosby, I like this energy because I feel like he is the rest of the NFL is looking at him like, wow, we need that piece. So I think he is eventually going to play Mahomes in the playoffs, and it's going to be a big deal. He just won't be wearing a Raiders uniform because the Raiders are not going to the playoffs anytime soon. I think we're more likely to land on Mars, as we were talking about earlier in the show, oh. than the Raiders be back in real relevancy. They have no, I, I'm sorry, they have no chance next year. No chance. Okay, well then, we've talked about this. I don't want to say no chance, but I, I think they should start over with a rookie quarterback. The problem is, you're right, what's Max Crosby doing there, and what's Devontae right. Adams doing there? The time frames don't match up, exactly. They, you know, I just looked, they're fifth lowest in the league in Super Bowl odds next year. They're, 20, they're like 28th, basically. 
Josh Jacobs is likely leaving. Uh, Devontae Adams is getting older. He, I think, like Crosby and Adams, I'd be more. I think it's more likely they leave than this team succeeds with them. I okay. think they need a full reset, and that means these really good players are going to be gone. Okay, but here's the thing, and I know this might not mean a lot down the road, but those were the two guys who stood up, stood up and banged the table for Antonio Pierce. It is very rare that the interim coach actually gets the job, and he did because of what they showed at the end of the season. If Antonio Pierce is the real deal, and if they hit on quarterback, and I'm going if, if, if here, this is on the right path. This is finally getting yourself on track. For what? For the playoffs. Yeah. For a Super Bowl down the line. Not this year, for sure. Well, maybe maybe not this year. Coming up, uh, Russell Wilson allegedly making a visit. To where? To whom? To what? I'll tell you that next. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining.
One minute remaining. Five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He can run the 40 faster than Tom Brady. He got a perfect score on the Wonderlick. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Okay, did we potentially find a maybe landing spot for Russell Wilson? Hey, welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. Perloff, uh, yep. reportedly Russell Wilson will be meeting with the Pittsburgh Steelers. To be honest, I, I was pretty surprised by it, considering... At the Combine and since, the Steelers have said full faith in Kenny Pickett, um, Mason Rudolph, they want him back. You bring in Russell Wilson and you bring him on the team, you've essentially just stiff-armed Kenny Pickett. He is not going to beat out Russell Wilson if that's a true competition. And goodbye, Mason Rudolph, too. That might not be that big of a deal. And you have completely shaken everything up. (laughs) I think they've had three quarterbacks before. Uh, They could keep Mason Rudolph as well. Regardless, uh, yeah, I think when they kept Rudolph in the starting lineup at the end of the season, didn't put Pickett back in, that said said a lot. They're nervous about Kenny Pickett. The other thing, think about the fan base. Not that Russell Wilson is the end-all, be-all, but I don't think they like Pickett that much. I think they'd be, even though he's from University of Pittsburgh, I think they would be okay with that move, right? The local reaction would be, I don't think they want Kenny Pickett. They don't want status quo. They want them to take a shot here. Okay, but I ask you, like, Russell Wilson's stock couldn't be lower. I know that last year the numbers aren't as bad as people make them out to be. Uh, Oh, the the numbers were good last year, right? Right, that's what I'm saying. People make it out like he's washed. Those weren't those kind of numbers, right? right. right. Um, Eye test may be a little bit different. Uh, They had a nice five-game winning streak in the middle of the season, but, you know, Russ doesn't have the same speed that he used to have, clearly. You know, he doesn't like to throw inside the numbers. He can still throw the long ball, um... And listen, he's got the pedigree that's just way better than Kenny Pickett. So he, again, will win this competition. I just ask you, are you winning a Super Bowl with Russell Wilson? I don't think so. And I don't know if you're winning with Kenny Pickett. All I know is that he's going into year three. It's your job as an NFL team to also develop somebody, right? And develop a quarterback. And to say, all right, we're waving the white flag on Pickett. We missed, we whiffed. This was a bust goodbye. Just doesn't seem like where the organization is at. Uh, I don't know if that's where the organization is at, but I think that's where the NFL nation is at. I don't think people think Kenny Pickett's going to develop into a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He had Matt Canada as an offensive coordinator. Everyone's like, why can't he push the ball down the field? But like, even that guy so, was terrible. He was a number 20 pick. He wasn't the number two pick. I fe- feel like his expectations were already kind of low. Uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I think everyone even inside of Pittsburgh and outside of Pittsburgh has sort of moved on in their head from Kenny Pickett, that it's not going to develop into that Super Bowl thing. And he's in his third year. You have five years to do it on the rookie salary cap. I think if Pittsburgh goes to Russell Wilson, a lot of people say, yeah, I didn't see it with Pickett either. Or is it possible that Russell gets there and is a backup? That seems unlikely to me. I don't think so. Unless yeah. you are, again, and you now you got to stretch your mind a little bit. We're talking about Russell Wilson uh, reportedly has a meeting with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So you'd have to stretch your mind here that... They actually stack the deck for Pickett in a quote unquote quarterback competition to try to boost his confidence. I just don't I don't think they're gonna do that. I don't think they would go through the trouble. You know, I think that they would like Pickett with Rudolph as the backup. I, I guess I maybe I'm naive that I'm mm. believing what they're saying during lying season, so forgive me, that they are not ready to give up on Pickett. And if you bring in Russell Wilson, you are giving up on Kenny yeah. Pickett. 
Uh, I think that's not a bad idea. Right. Honestly, I would even look at the draft. I, I know it didn't work out with Pickett in the 20s, but if Bo Nix or Penix might be interested in them, them too, I, I hate to say it, you, Pickett will be there, but if you're going to build around that guy, I don't think you're going to get anywhere with TJ Watt. Pickett is not going to maximize the value of the team you have around him, so you got to start thinking differently. And Russell Wilson is different. I mean, it's a risk. He has really slowed down. He's not the scrambler he once was. But I think he can get the ball to Deontay Johnson, get the ball to George Pickens, and that we did not see at all last year. Yeah, you're right about that. And Rudolph was able to push the ball down the field. Now, there's another part of this that you almost have to feel like you're going full disclosure, which is there's like a business relationship that yeah, exists yeah. between Russell Wilson, uh, Sierra, and one of the minority owners of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're all in business together. It's called Evolution Advisors. It's a joint venture with Acrisure, which is the naming rights of the stadium. So it's not a small or insignificant business uh, like right, relationship. That, but that can't be part of this, can it? I mean, I've never heard of a quarterback having a business relationship and getting the starting job because of it. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. I, I, maybe it's just maybe. a for instance, like or, or not a for instance, a coincidence, part of me. But it also could be seen as someone doing someone else a favor. 855-212-4CBS. You are welcome to weigh in. Russell Wilson having a meeting, reportedly, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. What do you think? Is it real? Are they giving him a real shot? Or is it just for show? Okay, it is five minutes after 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Time on a Friday, which means it's time for the Maggie and Perloff Top 5 After 5. I got five on it. It's been a big week on Maggie and Perloff. Five on it. Here are the week's top five moments at five after. All right. Every Friday at this time, we count down the top five moments of the week from the show. Coming in at number five. I was not here for this one. This was when EJ and Perloff were hosting the show together on Monday. You guys started talking about gassers and Oklahoma drills and it looks like Pete Bellotti is the man who is doling out punishments around here? Well, you could choose because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nice man, so you could choose. Uh, the first would be first would be run gassers for a week. Okay. <laughs> Second would be do the Oklahoma drill with an NFL athlete. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing this. I got to you. I'll <laughs> do one. <laughs> well, what was this about? You guys fighting to the death? I forgot. Oh, it's our over under four and a half oh, quarterbacks yes. in the first round. The bet, if five quarterbacks go, then I win. If four go, the EJ wins, and Pete gets the doll at the punishment via. <laughs> we decided on gas. Pete, you'll let us run gassers, right? Because yeah. you know we would not survive the Oklahoma yes. drill. Gassers. Yeah, I was very clear saying I'm not getting run over by Bart Scott or somebody like that. <laughs> that would not be fun. All right, number four, the Maggie Perloff top five moments from the week. Uh, NFL athletic uh, senior reporter Diana Rossini joined us on Wednesday to give us the insider scoop on everything going on in the National Football League. And it turns out that I'm actually more popular in her house with her parents than she is. If my parents could pick uh, to have a new daughter, <laughs> they would pick you. Um, they tell this to me all the time. Uh, you know, they listen to you and they, they use your opinions to form their own. So they take your content and... And then tried to debate me on stuff. And they said, well, Maggie says this, this, and that. <laughs> By the way, tell the Rossinis I'll be over for dinner at 6. Uh, okay. <laughs> Number three, the top five moments for Maggie and Perloff this week. We talked about this several days on the show. The controversy surrounding the Iditarod uh, because mm. the famous dog sled race in Alaska, of course, because uh, one of the mushers had to kill a moose with a handgun because it was tangling with one of his yeah. dogs. And it's become the story of the year. <laughs> Turns <laughs> out. for the Chief Super Bowl, it's the musher is next. <laughs> Taylor Swift and then the musher. Uh, it turns out it's part of the rules that if a moose or caribou or something goes uh, falls in the in the trail, you have to gut it. Um, The guy who shot the moose and gut it didn't gut it properly. He got a two-hour penalty. And uh, it got EJ thinking about if this were him, how he would devise a plan to stymie his opponents. I would plant a moose. I'd plant a moose <laughs> yeah. on the trail. If I knew I was coming in fourth or fifth, I'd, whoever's first, I'd, I'd call a homie up and yeah. say, hey, you got Bring some... You got, you, I know there's moose <laughs> around, all right? Call the homie up and say, hey, I'm falling behind this race. We're having some problems. We need to we need to put a stop to this person that's in first place. 
Classic, yo. Get, I, find a moose. <laughs> Do you know how big a moose is, EJ? The logistics of this, I was actually thinking about it later that day. How are you going to get a moose on the trail? Look, I mean, put some peanut butter on the trails. <laughs> like that'll probably work. Moose tracks. I got you a lot of faith the, in the Alaskans. You got to do the moose call to get the moose to come on the track. That's hard to control. A moose are quite big and unruly, but it's a good plan. The best part about this is I always imagine the person who picks up that call from EJ. He's like, yeah. oh, you need a moose? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. I uh, would bring a chocolate moose. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, moose yeah. tracks ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, number two, Maggie Perloff, top five moments of the week. Oh, boy. How did this one even start? Someone offered a college, uh, an NBA coach, a lifesaver. Darvin Ham was offered lifesavers. Right. Like, got us talking about our favorite candies. And then Perloff reminded us of a story from the early 2000s. Oh. About when one candy company decided to offer a sugar free option for their gummy bears, the reviews to the sugar free gummy bears were bad. This one's called, yep, believe the hype. Long story about buying them from my coworkers. Everybody tried them. Best moment of the day was when one of them, who had been in the bathroom for half an hour by that point, texted one of the others, quote, if you think that's a fart, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. The cramping started about an hour later, and soon enough, I was as bloated as a balloon in Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. When the rumbling started, I sprinted down the hallway and made it to the bathroom just in time for the four horsemen of the apocalypse to stampede <laughs> from my backside, laying waste to my home septic system and my will to live. <laughs> I, I love Bogus's read. It sounds like he's reading a, a kid's story. <laughs> no kid story. No, definitely not. This is a PG-13 rated R yeah. version of this. Oof. Oh, man. All right. Number one, Maggie and Perloff, top five moments from this week. Our big announcement that EJ and I will be wearing singlets to WrestleMania. Then we realize WrestleMania just down the road. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah, baby. A city we have history with on this show. So we uh, we made some calls. We talked to some people. We ran it up the flagpole. And WWE is all in. Oh, wow. Me and EJ wearing the singlets, going to WrestleMania. And now the only question is, are the singlets going to match? And we had an amateur wrestler call in before, independent wrestler, pardon me, not amateur who said, we got to also create some kind of characters around this. And he suggested a pirate and a clown. <laughs> I don't know how seamless coming to play with pirates and clowns, but okay. Um, I think you guys should embrace that. Anything to cover up, wear more clothes, I would suggest. I know. Can I be a wizard and like wear some yeah. kind of robe and a hat and a beard? Uh, I, what if I showed up and I wear a Ric Flair robe? I heard those cost thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> you got the bread. Then, then, da Darius Rucker paid over a million for an original Ric Flair robe. Uh, Do I you wear that around the house? I don't know. I don't know where he wears that. <laughs> That'd be neat, though. I mean, he should go to WrestleMania and wear it. That's, that's, that's where he should go. Yeah. Let's take a picture with him. Call Hootie. <laughs> All right. Those are the top five moments of the week. Uh, thank you very much, everyone who contributed. And... We have this Russell Wilson question question out there for you. Uh, is this feel like a genuine? Would this be a genuine offer to Russell Wilson for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Would he be starting for the Steelers? Do you think he's the best option? Yeah, is it a good idea? Mm -hmm. I think it is, and I, I just don't see if they bring out Kenny Pickett and he's not good. Everyone's going to say, "Oh, you should have done something this off season." So what's the risk? You don't give up a draft pick and you don't pay any money. This is a good deal. This is yeah. a bargain shopping match. It is, and I do love a bargain. However, you are essentially punting on a guy you took in the first round two years ago. And I don't think Pickett has played that bad. This is Zach Wilson we're talking about here. The guy can play the position. Just can he get a better offensive coordinator? Mm -hmm. Already started to look better once they got Canada out of the building. And now you've got Arthur Smith. So I, I just think I would keep the momentum going. Yeah, I honestly, I want to see Russ play next year. I'm just curious. I'm very curious as a football fan, does he have anything left? I think most people think probably not. It'd be a good spot for him, it, you know, he, to really resuscitate his career. He said he was going to win two Super Bowl rings. Oh, yeah. I That's about not that. happening. <laughs> that is not happening. But I, I'm a Russ fan. I'll say it. I'd like to see him sort of prove that Denver was an aberration and that Pittsburgh, he could be a better quarterback for them. Kenny Pickett, I like too. 
But I think Russell Wilson would be a better fit. I think there's a, a potential career track that I see potentially is, is very pie in the sky for Russ, Russell Wilson for another former quarterback who's now in the Hall of Fame. Think about it. Your star one place leaves, goes somewhere else, fails, then becomes a backup for a young quarterback and then takes the job and goes to the Super Bowl. Kurt Warner. Is this a possible Kurt Warner situation? With the where, Cardinals. With the Cardinals, where right. Kurt Warner went to oh, Arizona. Okay. They thought that he was going to be behind Matt Leinart, and he's better than Matt Leinart yep. in training camp. Matt Leinart, I guess, kind of gets like a Fugazi injury or whatever, and then now Kurt's the starter, and then Kurt never leaves the job. He takes the team to the Super Bowl. He has a lot of really good years in Arizona. Maybe this is Russell Wilson's Arizona. Maybe he can go there, mm. take a team with some talented receivers, some talented skill players, and a much better defense than that Cardinals defense had. Right. And maybe he could uh, kind of resuscitate his career. Because Kurt Warner's career was on life support when we went to Arizona, similar to where Russell Wilson is right now. Yeah, you're right. I don't think we had the lows with Kurt Warner, though. Even when he was in New York and he was the clear bridge for Eli Manning, you never got the lows of what you had in Denver. So, like... He was the placeholder for Eli. They were actually at a winning record. Yep. There was a near, like, I don't say mutiny in the locker room, mm-hmm. but the guys at the time, I've talked to Imani Toomer about this, they were not happy that they switched course and went to Eli Manning 10 games into the season yeah. or whatever. And we never saw, like, Russ had some had lows here in Denver. But think about it, though. There was kind of a mutiny this year with Russell Wilson. I mean, when we learned that thing about the fact that they were they were threatening to bench him, even though they were they had beat the Chiefs, and that they were, at that point, may have had a winning record. They were close to having a winning record. There were people upset in that locker room, upset in that city that, that this had even happened because it felt like the Broncos still had a shot at the playoffs. Even right. when they decided to pull the trigger, yeah. people were still him, yeah. upset. So there is some parallel with Kurt Warner in that regard. I, th- I agree with EJ a little bit. I think Kurt Warner was at a lower point than Russell Wilson is even now. Kurt Warner wasn't even playing. Nobody expected anything out of him in Arizona. And by the way, that Arizona team that made the Super Bowl, that is one of the craziest Super Bowl teams. They, weren't they 9-7 <laughs> and seven that year? Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. And it was an all-time great Super Bowl. Yeah, and it was a, one of the best Super Bowls ever. That was an incredible story. Man, Steelers fans who heard EJ say that are probably thrilled right now. Just the thought of him being there, Kurt Warner, is amazing. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. You are welcome to weigh in. Would it be a good idea for the Pittsburgh Steelers to bring in Russell Wilson? Also coming up, we will check in on Aaron Rodgers. I mentioned it before. Doing a podcast uh, Nothing to do with sports and maybe everything to do with sports. It's Roger saying ridiculous stuff. We'll get to that next. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining.
Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. What the f*** is Aaron Rodgers up to today? Ah, old friend. (laughs) Yeah, where's he been? (laughs) Well, we got a little, maybe, clarity on Aaron Rodgers' newest hobby. He was on the Keep Hammering podcast, which is a podcast that is hosted, Perloff, by a man who's a champion archer. Wow, and, that sounds like a cool guy. And yeah, and bow hunter. That makes sense. Turns out Rogers now has a lot of interest in bow hunting, and he expressed that on this podcast. You know, going out in the woods for four days, you know, yeah. and being as precise and quiet and careful and and uh, cunning as possible to to shoot an animal, and then yeah. to not just shoot an animal, but to eat the meat, to mm-hmm. share the meat. To, it's a harken back to days of old when there was a communal, uh, you know, hunting was communal. Right. You know, it was it was a part of uh, sustenance. It was the live. It was the lifeblood of it. Every part of the animal was used, and, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was a fan of uh, Alaska shows and shows where survivalists. Yeah, this is what we gotta do. You gotta eat the heart first. Bow hunting is super cool. Uh, not, I am sorry uh, if you're an animal rights activist, but if you're going to hunt, it feels like a, I agree with Aaron and says it's the more natural way to hunt than just put some seed out on the driveway and blow a deer away. There's no, nothing in that. I like what Roger's saying. More. Yeah, and a little sport. I just, what I cannot help but get out of my mind is Roger's talking about going to the woods for four days and you're, you know, hiding and you're trying to, you know, hunt down this animal with a bow, and then you just go back to your ten million dollar Malibu mansion afterwards. Like the juxtaposition of his life as a famous rich person, and then wanting to do this get back to nature thing to me just feels very stark. But that's just where my uh, mind went. So you're saying he should do more one of those fancy hunting trips where you stay in a <laughs> no, gorgeous no, no. lodge? No, no, I just find it funny. Also, I'm assuming when he spent 18 years in Green Bay. 
in Wisconsin. That's really where the hunting could have come into play. New Jersey, uh, you can hunt there. It's probably not the same. Well, th- that being said, I would hope he only lived in Wisconsin during the season. I would hope he was not out in the woods for four days. But he <laughs> should be watching tape of the Vikings. That <laughs> yeah, right. would be bad. And uh, is it New Jersey? Don't the Jets sell everybody on, hey, come here and you can hunt? Isn't that their big thing? That's how they got Favre? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that was, yep. I've heard that. Story. By the way, I don't know that part of Jersey as well, but I hear that all the time. Oh, you're a half hour away from great hunting. Yeah. You've never well, heard that? No, I mean, I live in New Jersey. I know that it's, you can get close to Pennsylvania. It's right there. You can go hunting. It just, most people think of it's like you're sitting outside the Newark airport. <laughs> it's like, hey, who wants <laughs> to go out in the woods? Do you remember when Mario Williams, former number one overall pick, signed with the Bills? Yeah. They apparently sold him on hunting as a big part of Buffalo. Oh, he went hunting with Jim Kelly. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so you hunting is a big part of it. Buffalo, though, people, that's upstate New York. Everyone hunts. You have to give Rogers credit for this. Last year was a darkness retreat. Now he's at least in a deer blind. Like, it's getting a <laughs> it's little getting more normal. <laughs> I, whatever you think of bow hunting, it's more normal than a darkness retreat. That's true. Uh, more from Rogers. This uh, uh, the football side. Getting deep into the depth chart here. Punters and kickers. That's who he wants the Jets to be focusing on. We have, uh, last year, an incredible kicker and punter. Uh, both older guys, which I love. Mm-hmm. Um, but Thomas Morstead was uh, our punter. He had a phenomenal season. Um, he's in his late 30s, but takes care of himself incredibly well. And, uh, you know, was just a weapon for us. You know, with hang time, with inside the 20 punts, inside the 10 punts. I mean, they were like game-changing plays. Right. Where we had multiple inside the five in, in multiple games. And then Greg Zerloin. Our kicker had a phenomenal year. I think he only missed two kicks all year. Wow. Uh, he's just a weapon. How'd the quarterback feel? <laughs> like, no wonder you have a good punter. Yeah. You're how many three and outs of the Jets? Sorry, guys. Look, I'm happy that he's not clamoring for receivers here. And, like, yeah. Just, Wait. yeah, the fact that he wants them to re sign the punter and kicker, I'm like, great. Focus on that. Let the football people actually get your help. We don't want, we'll need another Alan Lazard. Yeah, Rodgers is making great strides this offseason. He's a much better quarterback. By the way, who does not love – I love Thomas Morstead and Greg Zierlein. Awesome. Thomas Morstead is a great Twitter follow. I don't know if he's a good punter. And Legatron, he's a great punter. He was, he was awesome last year. Me- Rodgers is not wrong about that. Remember when we called Zierlein Legatron? Do, does anyone call him that Yeah, anymore? Greg the leg. Greg the leg. But here's the thing. The, I'm sorry, guys. I don't I, – who knows what the Jets season is going to be next year. But I had to be honest. Like, you need a good punter. You had Zach yes. Wilson as your quarterback. You've got it. He's good. the punter's got to be a weapon because the quarterback's not a weapon. It's there, there are some punters who are probably just as good as Morstead that just don't get the opportunity. <laughs> so Morstead much had, burn. You know, it's like a uh, it's like a guy going to a team that has no other scorer, so he's averaging thirty five. You yeah. know, he gets a lot of opportunities. Yeah, he's got a green light. Well, the Chiefs made a lot of news, didn't they? Sign that guy who's in all the trouble, the punt god. Signed yeah. with the Chiefs, who never punt the ball. Right. They prioritize punting now. They cut Tommy Townsend. So maybe punting is an underestimated thing here. Maybe oh, Bel- Belichick always left-footed punter. Yeah, he loved yeah. the punters. You're right. Uh, when your punter is your star, that's not a sign of strength normally, is it, Meg? Well, let's also give the Jets, let's throw them a bone here. Rodgers likes their chances in 2024. I think we got the right guys. We got a good group of, uh, of really talented young guys. We had the rookies of the year from a couple of years ago and Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner, uh, top corner and top receiver. We got a couple of guys behind him. We're also um, incredible rookies uh, and coming off great second years. Jermaine Johnson had a big year for us as defensive end. And Brees Hall, our starting running back, who had a phenomenal year um, uh, catching the ball. Had like 600 yards receiving, I think, and had a ton of yards rushing for us. And he's a game breaker. So uh, we got to shore up the offensive line a little bit to add a couple guys there, maybe get another receiver. But um, – I like our chances, and, and uh, you know, I feel like if I'm out there, we always got a chance. So funny to me. He's saying this to a guy who's a, a champion archer and bow hunter. Mm-hmm. I think he cares about Brees Hall. Yeah, he had to describe, hey, uh, Jermaine Johnson, defensive end, <laughs> yeah, right. for those who don't know. Yeah. Anyway. That I think that, that, that was kind of nice. It was a little toned down. Like, uh, the Jets are going to have a much better offseason because all that, nobody's going to pay attention to them like last year. Last year was a circus. I think the expectations have lowered uh, to a more much. Did you hear him there? He's like, yeah, I think we have a nice team. We have a nice shot. Last year was like, let's go to the Super Bowl. Wait five minutes. Wait, wait till he gets back on the McAfee appearances and we start yeah. ramping up. Also, I listened to an hour and 20 minutes of this podcast. Whew. He really, he, he believes he's, he's a living legend. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree. Rogers is an all-time great. Maybe one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. Probably one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. 
he definitely thinks of himself that way. So he he may have toned down the expectations in that clip, Perloff, but he's walking well, around like my you know what doesn't stink. I'll tell you right now though, America will not do a Jets hype season. They 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 were burned by last year. I, I think if Mike Greenberg gets on get up and starts talking <laughs> Super Bowl, they're gonna pull the plug. The uh federal government's gonna put a warning across it. They, think, we cannot do this again. I think the problem for me, and maybe Pete could say as a Jets fan, maybe he feels differently. Is actually, you know, you said Pearl off his point about how he was toned down. This actually reminded me of the Rodgers that first came to New York. He sounded clear minded. He sounded focused. He sounded like someone that wasn't trying to make waves. Like, like you know, besides him having weird stuff about hunting or whatever, like he was just like really kind of humble a little bit. And as soon as he got hurt, it was like all of the Green Bay nonsense that played that franchise came back. And maybe it's a thing where he just has to stay healthy. He says it multiple times in this podcast that, look, I got to stay healthy. I got to find a way to stay healthy. Maybe it's him being focused and being healthy that will get all of that circus stuff out of there. But for me, it's like I, I believed in you before. You showed me this guy before, and I bought in hook, line, and sinker. The pro loss point, I'm not doing that again. Yeah, like keep, I, You are dreaming. what you look like or how you present yourself. And, like, last year seems like a facade. Uh, in the chat, Daly says, you're the biggest clown, a Raj. We call it hunting, processing, eating. So he's a poser hunter? Poser hunter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, if he's going to do the Iditarod after his <laughs> post play, he better get good at processing an animal fast. Honestly, I think Aaron Rodgers, I think he will do the Iditarod. I'll go that far. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's I, absolutely, everything about him is like, I got to show that I'm more than what people think I am. Yeah. Oh, I'll I'll challenge that. I see Rogers more climbing Everest or something like that. Yeah. Kilimanjaro. I don't know if he's going to do Iditarod, but something. I, I think there's good odds on both. I agree with both <laughs> you guys. I, I think I, I do want to bet EJ that the Raiders don't make the playoffs, but I feel very, you know, that's not happening. But Aaron Rodgers doing Iditarod, I'd say 60-40 yes. By the way, he <laughs> did also say he's never doing the darkness retreat again. Yeah, He's going to keep trying new things. It's just a matter of time before he has a midlife crisis and does some some adventure overseas. Oh, no, no. We're having the midlife crisis. Yeah, it could we're, be. You're right. right. <laughs> we're in it. You're, is, you're probably right. Yeah. Uh, again, as Daly said, a Raj has gone supersonic ridiculous, which sounds like a cool band. Bogus well, is cool, here with that. Cool headlines. video game, too. Yeah. Supersonic. Uh, guys, as I said an hour ago, I was saving the best for last. The Detroit Pistons and their longtime fans like Pearl can celebrate win number 10 this morning. <laughs> uh -oh. That's Any it? team can get to 10 in November. It takes a real commitment to make it till March in single digits. But the Pistons are finally here, courtesy of last night's 118-112 home win over the Nets elated head coach Monty Williams I told the guys um, you just sometimes you got to do just enough to win a game um, I felt like we were a little lethargic but I guess the Nets were lethargicer this is Detroit announced his retirement right after that first <laughs> home did they do a pizza party for the last time what do you no, get now right. those are the Raptors ah, this time. yeah but by the way they're not the worst team in the league right no they're not um, the the Wizards have more losses but they have only 10 wins on March 8th. Wait, let me ask a question, and this is up to Pete, really. How long do I have to root for the Pistons? Do I get them next year as well? Yes. Because they're <laughs> because this draft, they are. I looked at a mock draft. They are supposed to get Zachary Rissacher with the number two pick. He's 6'9", 204 pounds. <laughs> mm. That seems a little skinny to help my Pistons. <laughs> How is that possible? He's going to be one of the best ever, and you get to root for him. <laughs> yes, Pete got to choose Perloff's basketball team because Perloff tried to jump off the 76ers bandwagon. There's got to be a time limit, though. At a certain point, no, I get a new death. team. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit business for life? You should yes. get a tattoo. <laughs> yes. This is logo. Uh, Everything. One last Pistons note. This is their first home win since January 28th. Uh, the T-Wolves got win number 44 last night because Anthony Edwards scored 44 and did this. The free throw is up. It is no good. The rebound of the Pacers. They don't call a timeout. Halliburton the hit ahead. Neesmith with it. Dribbles in. Shot blocked. Oh my goodness. What a rejection by Anthony Edwards to save the game. 113-111. Wolves win. Wolves win. Anthony Edwards. Oh my. What a block. Alan Horton on T-Wolves Radio. Call. Edwards hit his head on the rim, denying Aaron Neesmith's tying lay-in just before the buzzer. I found my second win uh, in, late in that fourth. 
um, and it was over. Once I found my second win, I knew it was nobody that could stop me. Edwards on Bally. I what that feels like. Couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a human. And maybe on a ladder <laughs> and you could experience that. <laughs> huh. Uh, his team winning in Indy 113-111 as Crow Anthony Towns reportedly opted for left knee surgery that should have him back on the floor early in the postseason. Steph Curry picked up a right ankle issue last night in the Warriors' 125-122 home loss to the Bulls. Steve Kerr did not have an update postgame. The Nuggets swept their season series with the Celtics, 115-109. Nikola Jokic, 32 points, 12 boards, 11 assists. And Luka Doncic had 35-11-11 as the Mavs snapped their three-game skid, 114-108 over the Heat. Doncic joining Russell Westbrook in 2017 as the only players with five consecutive 30-point triple-doubles. Perloff wants you to be aware of this developing story. Mm. Gambling watchdog U.S. Integrity Mm. flagging yesterday's Temple UAB men's basketball game because the line went from UAB plus one and a half to plus eight over just a few hours. The Blazers eventually winning by 28 Temple did not respond to a request for comment, but the AAC confirmed it's aware of the situation. And apparently Temple games have been monitored now for a while. So something fishy is going on around Owls men's basketball. Something fishy implies that something fishy might be going on. This seems like obvious (laughs) point shaving going on right now. What's going on? Is there any way two to eight and they didn't take the game off the board? I thought that's what you're supposed to do in that situation. Well, also there was no injury, right? There's no, No, nothing obviously would have, would have done this. I I can't help but think, you know, did anyone talk about the referees? You know, Philadelphia is where Tim Donaghy is from. All these referees are from (laughs) there. This is Delco. Yeah. Delaware (laughs) County, uh, including my former Ed Malloy, my former summer league teammate. Yeah. They're all for Philly, but I don't think this is officials. This has got to be, we've wondered with legalized gambling, will college athletes be tempted and, Oh kind of seems like it. I, when I was staying oh, there, yeah, suspend yeah. all the, remember the, the college baseball coach yeah. who was literally calling from Alabama. the stadium. But we really like haven't had, since legalized gambling uh, gained so much momentum, we haven't had a team betting against itself so obviously, have we? Calvin Ridley didn't bet against the Falcons. No, but that Iowa, Iowa State stuff, I don't know how much detail we got about yeah, that. Yeah, that could have been yeah. for sure. But this seems pretty much like old-fashioned Arizona State-style dumping a game. Wow. Which I can see a college kid who's 19. They need the money well, or they would want the money. I was going to say with NIL now, you'd hope that maybe they wouldn't be tempted. But how much are Temple basketball players making? I was saying the sad state of affairs of Temple basketball. There was a time when John oh. Cheney was there. They were a serious oh. program. Oh, when I was in college in the A10, and they were in the A10, it mm. was great. Oh, nah, it Bogus. wasn't great. <laughs> we had what's his, what was his oh, name? Oh yeah, St. Joe's Temple, the UMass. Was that guy's Yeah, Temple. Temple was a great yeah, program. Yeah, Temple was good. Oh, oh no, 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 no. It, they were great. It wasn't great that they were great oh. if you were playing against them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't need any more Pepe Sanchez in my life. Yeah, Pepe Sanchez. I went to a game at the Palestra where Marcus Camby and UMass went against Aaron McKee and Temple. I could be completely making this up. There were <laughs> 10 NBA players in the A-10 on the court. It was incredible. Yeah, it I mean, used to be a dominant conference. A good conference. And Chaney and Cal were enemies. They hated each other. Chasing them around the God, press yeah. conference. All-time moment. Also, now we, now we Temple's dumping games to UAB. And, and UMass is moving to the MAC to support football. <laughs> you explain this to me. Why is Temple playing UAB? What's going on here? Because they're in the AAC so they can play Group 5 football. Uh, football ruins everything, huh? Yeah. UConn's the only smart one. UConn said, never mind. Let's go back to the Big East. So I, I, I think this is clearly a betting scandal that is going to happen here. and We're all witnessing the beginning stages. It looks that way. I mean, especially if they've been monitoring them for weeks. This is bad. <laughs> this is not. This is not good. And I just wonder if anyone's going to end up going to jail. Yeah, that's what happens here. I, uh, I know. Uh, let me lighten the mood. We've got multiple people in Kansas City about to lose body parts, apparently, because they uh. attended that frigid Chiefs Dolphins playoff game. Wait, what? Yeah, a KC yeah. doctor telling the Fox affiliate in town that her guess is ten to twenty people will likely need parts of them amputated because of the frostbite that they picked up at that game. I want, for the record, by the way, I said, why don't they move this game? And Maggie, you you called me soft on this show. I was with you on that, Pearl. We both both said that this is, they should not be playing this game. Wait, what did I say? I said what? That was much like your Kyle Filipowski take. I said, let them storm the court. What did I say? Uh, (laughs) You were like, like, oh, no, this is different than Buffalo. Like, Buffalo, like, you know, people couldn't drive to the game. 
It, oh, oh, right, 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 right. Like, it's yeah. dangerous. It doesn't matter. Wait, but I never said they shouldn't move the Kansas City game. I was just defending why they moved the Buffalo game to Monday because it was snow. I think that was a, I think that was two different conversations. Didn't I? I, I feel like I was looking up the closest so, indoor dome to Kansas City. I feel like I remember that. I was like, they go to New Orleans, Indianapolis, for some reason, wasn't available, I, and... Dallas. I, I seem to recall you saying if any players wear sleeves, they're soft. <laughs> I mean, you were full. I think I was full railing against New York Maggie. I think I was railing against any parent who would dare put gloves well, the on issue their was children. A lot of Dolphins fans were saying that, like, how come this game with the Steelers got right. moved? And our game didn't. didn't and the right. thing, your thing was like, well, it's people couldn't get to the game. It was in a state Buffalo. of emergency. It was a dangerous state right. of emergency. It was a travel ban. And Pearl of them and, and me as well. We were like, but it's dangerous for fans to be there. And right. now people are losing limbs. I can't believe it. It's terrible. It's and awful. It, it also ruined the game a little bit. That yeah. could have been a really exciting game. Miami had a lot of injuries on defense, so maybe it wouldn't be. But that game was not barely watchable. Yeah, I mean that that you're asking a team notoriously that can't play in cold weather to go to one of the coldest games in recorded history. No, that was definitely dangerous. The fact people have to get uh, limbs amputated. Am, amputated. I, I think know it's more like fingers and toes, not not, not limbs. arms. Yeah, but yeah, still, but, that's easy for us yeah. to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want to lose just, a finger. Just for, just for accuracy's sake, limbs implies arms and legs. It's Sorry. more like fingertips. Digits. Yeah, yes. you you actually raised the stakes a little bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Their heads are getting <laughs> amputated. Pets. Heads are falling. Yeah, off. but the question is. I know you buy a ticket to a sporting event. There's a, so much fine print on the back of it that basically absolves whatever mm. entity from anything. But could these people sue the NFL? Well, I don't think so. And I think it's look the I, as much as I as much as I think that these games, this game should not have been played, or they should have just played the Buffalo Bills game. What I will say is some of the people I've seen that had these issues, they were at this game wearing no shirt. Yeah. Like there's one Dolphins fan who's had yeah. this frostbite situation. He has no shirt on. Oh, that's oh, televised. Boy. You know what they should do? Now, I'm not for this, but it could be a way to stop that. Don't put those people on TV. It's like the streakers. Mm. You know, we don't televise that anymore, and it doesn't matter because we still have streakers. Right, even so the people are going to wear Super Super take their shirts off. But I'm saying... Uh, if- yeah, with social media, though, you don't need it to be on TV. Uh, yeah, it's still right. going to be on Instagram. That's so. true. I don't know if that's going to work. All right, back to the drawing board. Also, Let him freeze. No, I'm just kidding. Do they I do feel bad like, about this. Remember there was that Denver Broncos guy who always used to be shirt. I felt like growing up there were more shirtless guys in cold weather games. That was a thing. Yeah, no, it was for sure. I think I, it's still a thing. I think some Dolphin. I don't know if there were Dolphin players that wore no sh- shirt, no shirts. Yeah. But I think they definitely were guys that came out in like tank tops. Like in the warm ups to show. Tyreek hey. definitely did. Yeah, yeah Tyreek Hill, I think he did for sure. Like yeah. they definitely said, hey, we're not afraid. And they basically just didn't show up for 60 minutes. That <laughs> NFL guy. It was yeah. minus 20 degree weather. I wouldn't have either. NFL players always do that. They always show their toughness, like not wearing sleeves in the cold, and you could tell they're but dying. You know, the Giants <laughs> did this when they went to Lambeau. Yeah. Tom Coughlin got frostbite on his and face. And I don't remember what player it was, but somebody said that those guys doing that, some of them are kind of faking the funk because yeah. what they do is, even though you're not wearing sleeves, there there's heated creams that you can put on your arms. Wow. That... Make it not as bad. In fact, some people will say it actually is better to have that on than sleeves because oh, it, it'll weigh you down. So I, I, I forgot who it was, but there was an NFL player who said, like, yeah, some of these guys come out in the warm ups with, like, you know, tank tops on. It's like, uh, they put on some heated cream that allows them to kind of maybe not feel it quite as bad. It's still ne- zero degrees, but a little bit kind of fake was happening. Now, I don't think the guy in the Dolphins fan that was sitting in the And they in, passed any of that fat dude? In row 35. <laughs> I don't think he got any of that. So, unfortunately, he's dealing with what he's dealing with now. Do you guys remember when Andy Reid's mustache froze that night? That was Iconic this game. Image. Yeah. Yes. Th- that, that was this was game. Yeah, yeah that, I said right. that night. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, oh, I thought you meant like that night. Oh, no, no, a long like, time ago yeah, that, to me, that's the iconic image yep. of that game is the <laughs> icicles on his. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> Surprise, there wasn't like a hamburger in there. Sorry. <laughs> Ari. Nuggies. <laughs> we're all thinking it. No, we were not, Maggie. No, no, no. All right, I was thinking. I wasn't prepared for the. Let's recount some of the things Maggie said in the segment. A. She said they should have played that game. Right. <laughs> which we vaguely remember. And the people deserve to lose limbs, yeah. which <laughs> never even happened. Call the guy fat. <laughs> and, yeah. I just and assume. I don't call even... Andy Reid fat. Well. Yeah. And the NFL should crush them in a, in a lawsuit with a counter lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's, you know, Listen, you can I'm take the Ma- woman of the people. <laughs> you can take Maggie out of upstate New York. You cannot take the upstate New York out of Maggie. Well, listen. 
Uh, I got thoughts. I got thoughts. Uh, all right. Thank you, Bogus. No, thank you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah. You're the best. Uh, Love you. Be take nice my, to me. Take my bad takes and uh, go sit over here. Uh, coming up, a uh, big question with co- uh, college conference tournaments and basketball starting this weekend. The big question. Get to that next. Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Two 
15 seconds. Break ends in 5 seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Proloff. Proloff, you know what I'm really excited for tonight? What's that? Penn State, Iowa, women's college oh. hoops. The Big Ten tournament kicks off and all the other conference tournaments kicking off as well, which means this starts officially Caitlin Clark tournament time. We've had all the records broken. Now we're past that. Mm-hmm. So here we go with the Big Ten tournament and then uh, Selection Sunday's what? In about two weeks. So, well, for the women, is it uh, the same it's same time? About the same, yeah. Hold okay. On. I'll find it. Um, here's my question. So, do these points count for the tournament points count in the overall record? Oh, yes. I believe in college it does count. I know for college football it definitely counts. Okay. Like so your bowl stats count as your career stats. You know what I'm looking forward to? And I'm going to tell you right now. I'll let you in in the audience, though. So I'm in big hot water with Tennessee Volunteers fans. Oh, yeah. Tell us how that happened. So I, I posted a picture of Dalton uh, Connect pointing to his ring finger because I won the SEC regular season title. I said, what are you doing? You must have bigger goals. You're going to be a one seed. I'd hope you want to win the NCAA tournament. Everybody who basically from the state of Tennessee and any bordering SEC say, <laughs> call me a total loser. <laughs> and then I said, I'm jumping off the Vols bandwagon because you're too mean. Everyone said you're the softest human being on the planet. So I don't know what they want here. <laughs> wow. But anyway, anytime anyone wraps up a regular season title and celebrates about it, I'm going to go on Twitter and say, I would have thought you had bigger goals because I've never <laughs> been able to uh, piss off fans more than this take. And what's the big deal? You win a regular season title. You're a one seed. What are you doing here? Well, it was a little funny because none of nobody knew they actually gave out rings for this kind of thing. But... I, they, we don't even know if they do. <laughs> but why is this a is this an awful take to say? Don't over celebrate the regular season tournaments. Like win in the NCAA tournament. Nobody remembers what you do in a conference tournament. Yeah, I guess maybe can we give them a little grace because, you know, they're children. They're not children. They're young men and women. If it's Tennessee college. blows up my bracket, I don't care what they do. They do. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, do you think UConn's going to celebrate their conference title, assuming they win it? The men? Um, no, of course not, because they've already won an NCAA tournament. All they, they care about is Danny, getting the Final Four. Danny Hurley's like, he's from New Jersey. He yeah. he respects the legacy of the Big East. They might. I, th- I it's think a they, weird, it's a weird, he's weird. I think they that might. you probably should. Like, again, it's not, they're not, pro- I know they're getting NIL money, but they're not pros. Like, it's okay to sell. This is like baseball playoffs to me. It's cool to pop champagne at every stage. Oh, I hate that. It's my least favorite thing in sports. Act like the NFL and say, we haven't gotten where we want to get yet and focus on the ring. But they're so young. Do they really have to fake it like that? Can't they just be excited for a loss? I know you and the state of Tennessee now are at odds, but, and by the way, if you end up driving to San Antonio, you might want to avoid Tennessee at this point. I was going to tell you to go through Nashville, but yeah, no more. Yeah, you screwed up. You could have some Nashville hot chicken. So Purdue last year lost as a number one seed. Do you think any Purdue fan cares that they won the Big Ten? They won the Big Ten regular season and the tournament. Is that any consolation when you lose in the first round? Well, that they lost in very spectacular fashion. So, no. But well, if they Tennessee, made it to the Elite Eight or something, maybe. If Tennessee loses in the first round, that'd be the ultimate disaster. Well, they haven't done that yet. So, let's not put the stink on them. And and I watched Big uh, Purdue win that outright title in the Big Ten. And those players were giving it to the crowd. I don't think they were any ring finger stuff. But they definitely acknowledged winning the Big Ten. Yeah, that was a mistake on their part. And it probably EJ, was. you were here when I jumped on the Dalton Connect bandwagon. Yep. I was all about Tennessee. I was going to pick yep. them to win it all. Now I'm out. I'm having them go out in in the in the at least the round of six. You're, you're going out faster than Purdue went out of the tournament last year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, you're no longer even wearing orange. It's weird. You really yeah. taking this boycott. I, I look great in orange. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you're going to have to find a way to make it up to these Tennessee fans. You don't want these people on your back. Rocky you know? Top no. is awesome. Yeah. Like, we can't have... we Rocky Top can't be the ops, Perloff. They can't. And also, by extension, that means the show's going to have like beef right. with yeah. Tennessee, and I don't want that. Well, I could send I'll a note. I'll fight my own battles. Do I have to send a note to their overlord, Clay Travis, and say, please get <laughs> your friends off my back? I think you have to find whatever message board got to you. Uh, it was and... Outkick. Oh, it was Outkick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And it was the outkick wasn't even particularly mean, but everybody saw it and ran with it. I mean, what can we do to try to anything we try to do to get back in the good graces of Tennessee is going to put us on the outs with another fan base. I know, you know, yeah, that's the SEC. You can't win, right? It was a Miami fan who was offended by Graham Mertz. I have no problem offending Florida by saying "Go Vols." Yeah, college fans are tough. They're they are. tough. Man, you really stepped in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Maggie. You might want to distance yourself a little bit from this take. <laughs> oh, man. Got to say thank yous. Uh, big ones. Thanks to Sammy Steinlight, who stopped by to give us some uh, New York Red Bulls gear, and their home opener is this weekend. So thank you, Sammy, as always. Thank you to EJ Stewart. Thank you to Pete Pilati, Andrew Bogish, Andrew Kaplan, Lance Zierlein, Weedos and Coffee Drinkers. You guys are the best. We'll see you Monday. You're in a five-minute break.